Just curious if any of you have seen Jeremy in the subsequent time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Every time I see him, they're broken up. <laughs> So it doesn't matter if you've seen Love is Blind season six or not. I think we can all learn something about settling in love. You guys know I talk about settling and how I'm not a big fan of it, but I don't think it's immoral to settle. I think it's just complicated to settle in relationships. And I feel like Love is Blind season six was a great lesson on settling and why it often doesn't work. So I can't wait to get your input. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give my little rants and then we can have a discussion about it. I want to start with, I think we should start with probably Chelsea and, uh, probably Chelsea and Jimmy. I want to cover Chelsea and Jimmy and specifically AD and Clay. I think we should start with Chelsea and Jimmy just because they are easier to get through. I think AD and Clay will take us a little bit longer. There was a lot going on with them. So if you guys don't know, Chelsea and Jimmy did end up matching in the pods. The thing that stood out with Chelsea and Jimmy was their sort of attachment styles. And obviously we understand that the show is cut very specifically. Like we understand that Love is Blind as a TV show does cut the show up. So to be fair to the people we're about to review, this might be just reality TV fake. I mean, there are literally scenes where Clay and AD are cut halfway through the screen and you can see Clay's finger coming through a bad edit. So we know for a fact that the show is tricking us as the viewer to view these people in very animated and exaggerated ways. So let's be very open to them as a consciousness, as a singular entity, and remember that ultimately we don't know these people. And so we're not really talking about them we're talking about sort of their tropes and what they represent in our lives. So Chelsea and Jimmy got together in the pods after a little bit of a love triangle. They ended up picking each other. Now, from the moment as the viewer, we were watching them. We knew there was going to be problems. Jimmy was excited to be with somebody he felt was easy compared to the very difficult relationship of ending up with a single mom who was another woman on the show, Jessica. And he kind of defaulted to Chelsea. He kind of settled for her. Now, there was a <laughs> Okay. <laughs> In the show, there was one reason everyone thinks Jimmy chose Chelsea. I actually think he settled for her. I think he was too scared to date Jessica, who's a single mom. And Frankie, frankly, Jessica, I don't even want to get into Jessica. She was too high maintenance. It was such, so high maintenance. She exhausts me. Every time she talks, I'm exhausted. Jessica, okay? But the thing that made everyone think, the reason everyone thinks Jimmy chose Chelsea was because she said in the pods, she looks like a celebrity, MGK's girlfriend. And Jimmy said, Megan Fox, you look like Megan Fox. And that's why everyone thinks Jimmy chose Chelsea. But I would like to put forth to the jury that he chose her because she was easy compared to the high maintenance Jessica. Jessica was too high maintenance from her emotions to the trauma dumping to her bratty behavior to her sort of like wounded doll thing she would do. And she was a single mom of a 10 year old girl, which is a challenge in and of itself. And Jimmy coming from a town of like 500 people with kind of a small town mentality, he chose Chelsea not because she actually looked like Megan Fox, but because she was easier than Jessica. Now, I don't know if you think she looks like Megan Fox. I would love to hear your opinion. I actually think I see it. Now, this is what we, and we've talked about this before on the show, right? We've talked about this before. When you tell people you look like Megan Fox, they are going to expect closer to Megan Fox than further than Megan Fox. But in Chelsea's defense, she did say other people say this about her. And I do think she technically was telling the truth. I do see Megan Fox. Here, I'll show you a picture too. I personally do see it, but I would never tell people I look like Megan Fox if I looked like Chelsea because, and I mean this with the deepest sincerity and love, girl to girl, you don't look like, you look like the less pretty version of Megan Fox. And if you're going to say you look like someone, you probably 
don't want to say Megan Fox, who is one of the prettiest women I've ever seen. If you watch an interview with Megan Fox, there's just something about Megan Fox that's so beautiful. Probably her symmetry. Probably, who knows? This is even a good picture of Megan Fox. But Chelsea and Megan do look like one another. It's just not enough. So obviously Chelsea's face is very elongated. She's got the witch chin like I do. Big forehead. You know what I mean? So of course, Jimmy here and everyone in the audience is like, oh no. Oh no. Like we already know this is going to be bad. Because a lot of people would say like, okay, you don't look like Megan freaking Fox. But doesn't she a little bit look like Megan Fox? Literally, Chelsea would be talking during the show and I'd be like, Megan Fox. I would see it personally. And to give an example, we're going to watch a little bit of a video of some of Jimmy and Chelsea's fights and dynamics because I think her in motion, it makes more sense. But I think this controversy on the internet of like whether or not she looks like Megan Fox was a little overblown because... Honestly, I get it. I think I see it. So Jimmy, little sweet Jimmy, small town Jimmy, I think he did something that was quite unique to his personality. So before we watch the video, pay attention to these things. Chelsea, high anxiety, her attachment style. Gosh, if I had to name one, it would just be like anxious up the butt. Okay. Jimmy, Jimmy did something. I'm not sure if it was on purpose. But he didn't really like Chelsea. But he settled for her in a way that felt like a lie. So when Chelsea feels like he's lying to her, I think Chelsea is actually intuitively knowing that he's settling for her. Settling feels like a lie to a lot of people, especially people that want to be deeply, deeply loved. If you want to be deeply, deeply loved for who you are, the last thing you're going to want from a partner is somebody who settles. Is somebody who says like, oh yeah, you're good enough. You're pretty enough. Like you're you're kind of enough. I don't want to be enough. I want to be the thing, the it. I want to feel like we're connected. I want to feel like this is worth everything we're about to do together by doing life together. So Jimmy, I think in his in the forefront of his mind was like, yeah, I could be with Chelsea. But in his deep, 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 deep subconscious, I really think he knew that he didn't want her. And to be fair, after the show, they did admit that he told her multiple times he's probably not getting to the altar. So to be fair, as a, the audience member, as we're watching it, I think we are picking up on something that was we eventually learned true. But watch how Chelsea and Jimmy dynamic back and forth. Look at the way he talks and the way she talks. She is very overwhelming to his personality type and his personality type is too docile for her anxiety. And this is like a part of their incompatibility, right? But even more than that, I think the desire to villainize one or the other to say like somebody was the bad guy is also a part of settling culture because you're not willing to admit you just weren't compatible and it's not that deep. Instead, it has to be something cruel or malicious or evil. And sometimes it is. But also, but also, you know what I mean? So check this out. Let's pull this up for you guys. Um, let me see. This is a small YouTube channel that put together these scenes I thought were pretty good. I'll put a link in the chat. This is Christina Coco. Coke. I'm not sure how much of a YouTuber they are or if they just uploaded this particular video. But it was pretty good and it helped me figure out their dynamics. So I just thought we'd watch their video. Let's see. Oh, we'll pull this up for you guys. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, let's check this out. Dun, dun, dun. And I don't know if Netflix is going to take this video down because I am showing scenes from the show. So if the stream pauses for a second, it's okay. I'll, I'll be back. Don't fret. I'll be back. Here, okay, let's see how it goes. It was so uncomfortable for me. It made me really, really sad. All the girls talked about how great their connections were and like how I bragged about you all night you were the so already she's got the whiny voice it makes me so sad all the girls bragged about her. so she does the the sad thing with her voice which is a part of her like getting small and to be fair does communicate a lot like it communicates a lot of stress and a lot of not 
it communicates a lot in my feelings and feelings are valid. We're not here to dispel the validity of your feelings. But obviously already I'm looking at Chelsea and I'm like, why are you? And I think a part of it is that she probably was taught that this sound sounds compelling, maybe even to men, but it sounds like, you know what I mean? It's in her throat versus Hey, I really would like to talk to you. I'm feeling a way about things, you know, stuff like that. The only person who wasn't coming up to me, like being like loving and like, why couldn't we do that? And that wasn't true. Jimmy was actually one of the main men that went up to their girls and showed a lot of affection to them. Yeah, like everyone else was. I kissed you more than anybody kissed their woman tonight. Now, I don't know if that is exactly true, but Jimmy was one of the top contenders for showing affection to his partners. And again, like, Chelsea, Chelsea had this thing where she would self-sabotage with no data, which tells me trauma and attachment issues. And like, she has to go to therapy and we're not therapists here. We're philosophers. So like even thinking about introspection, like Chelsea was self-aware enough and her TikToks are currently very funny. Her self-awareness is very funny, but in the show it's clipped and edited to imply that she is unaware of her habits and that might be true I think a lot of people are unaware of their habits right I think that's really normal for us not to be aware until we are but actually current Chelsea like TikTok Chelsea she's funny she's aware she makes jokes and I I appreciate that I just felt really confident about also Chelsea did have a habit of drinking a lot so Chelsea was drunk a lot oh where we were and the connection we have to the point where I didn't have to be by your side right. all night. So I'm sorry. Right. That's fine. I don't need you by my side. But like, that's why this is very sad to me because like, it was just a very. How is this sad? This is like going out with our friends and you know. What I do love about Love is Blind is they put them in social situations where you actually do have to see what you're like amongst people with friends, drinking, eating, socializing. And Jimmy actually is a pretty good socializer, I would say. I think he was having a lot of fun. Not everybody was like him in that regard. I actually kind of was shocked. And every season shows this, by the way. Oh, I'm, I'm blinking on what season was it. One of the seasons, one of the girls really struggled. I can't remember her name. I can't remember her name. Um, but she was really struggling. She was the one Dr. Kirkonda kind of talked about a lot. Oh, about her mental health. I can't remember. But she had to like leave the parties and go and isolate. Like not everybody has a good reaction to social situations. I mean, gosh, I've had a panic attack or panic attack or two you know, at a social situation, I've definitely been the person who's like, I have to leave, I'm overwhelmed. But it's interesting, I guess, to see it through someone else's lens, right? Maiden says, I'm not sure that voice is a conscious choice. I don't think it is a conscious choice. I don't think Chelsea knows that she's really doing it. I just think she does it. I think it's both. I don't think she knows exactly that she's doing it, but I don't think I don't think she's unaware that she's doing it in a sense. Like she can't be unaware she's picking a fight even though she is picking a fight, but she can be unaware. I would say she's less aware than more aware, to be fair. And I think, again, even with Jimmy, I think Jimmy thinks he's doing the, all he can, but I think she intuitionally knows, like she knows, she knows in her gut, like he doesn't want her. I think they both know they're settling. And when you both know you're settling, I do think it's a recipe, unless you can talk about it out loud and say, hey, we're settling. Like we're gonna do that together. You have to put on this major facade of I love you, I love you like this. You're the best. We're the best couple here. Jimmy kept saying that a lot. Like we're the best couple here. And Chelsea's like, yeah, but like, you know, who's the best couple? So and so. And there was a couple who was the best couple. The only couple this season that got married. They were the best couple. The, we call them the anime couple. That's what my husband and I call them, the anime couple. And so, again, I think there's a lot of knowing they're settling and like no one willing to say it out loud because they keep trying to repair it. They keep trying to say, I love you. They keep trying to make it work. Instead of breaking up. Now, to be fair, there's a thousand dollars a week on the line and some TV time. So, you know. Where I stand, I'm the luckiest person. I'm the happiest person here. I'm sorry you feel that way, but. Thank you, thank you for acknowledging how I felt. I, I didn't feel loved by you. I didn't feel like, like I felt like I was inconveniencing you every time I like walked. You're not to inconvenience. You. I want to be around you. I love being around you. Now there are people who pick these kinds of fights on purpose to get the reassurance they need or to feel some sort of drama. This is the kind of dynamic that I think a lot of people even desire in relationships just so they're not, quote, say it with me, bored, which is like a really interesting idea to me because obviously like 
But this is like what I think a toxic relationship looks like. This is a form of toxicity because they're not really being honest with each other, but they're they're communicating in a way that feels honest to them, which is really interesting. Also, there is a man standing in their room right now with a big camera. There is literally a guy standing in the room with them, just filming them. I could never do this on camera. Isn't that funny how I can be a YouTuber? Because no one's in this room with me. I see none of your faces. No one's here. It's just me. I don't even know if I'm streaming. Am I streaming right now? These people, there's a human body in the room with a big camera and they're just looking at them. I just need you I, to hear me out, you, I, I hear you out. It like hurts. It really hurts. I'm sorry. I don't everyone make you feel sad. I was so confident on my decision with you and I was so confident that you had that same decision with me. And I do, I do, I love you. I love you with my entire heart. And that's why I'm having this conversation with you. Remember, Chelsea's also the person that said she's been cheated on in like a lot of her relationships. Red flag, right? Like, how's that possible? So just, you know. Because it hurt. And I love you. I'm having this conversation with you because- I, I love you too. Like, I just thought that was a given. I wouldn't have asked you to marry me. I know, but you have to understand, like, that it hurt me. Look in your eyes and tell me that I love you and how I felt about you. I wouldn't be having this conversation with you if I didn't give a crap. I know that. I know okay. you care about me. I do. I, I love you. I feel like you're questioning that I love you. What do you want me to do? I told you that my feelings were hurt. What, what else do you want me to say? I don't understand where this is going. This is making me mad. Okay? I'm okay. telling you that my feelings were hurt. You made me feel uncomfy. Okay. Well, so just take it. Fine. You're treating me unfair. It's not funny. It's, it's not funny. It's not funny, you know. Alex says calmness in a relationship can be unbearable to people whose nervous systems are always activated. Yeah, so genuinely, I do think like Jimmy's kind of like non-reactive. Jimmy's like, I think it signals to her brain like he doesn't care versus I signal, it signals to my brain that he's, so oh, I guess it does signal to my brain that he's kind of like dumb or like a dog or doesn't care as well or maybe isn't as invested you know what I mean like he does have a he does have like a dumb aura to him kind of like la, 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 I'm just a guy eating shrimp but also that makes me like him better because like he's too dumb to think maliciously like I feel like he's too dumb to do anything and to some extent you know what I mean but I think like Chelsea's consistently testing him and testing him, testing him through the relationship, which is exhausting to somebody like Jimmy, but also like she's exhausting to him because she's, you know, it's just like, it's so exhausting, but she's exhausted because there's not enough back and forth. There's not enough. Like she's looking for something, you know? I love you too. Are you sure? I'll always tell you I love you. Today I was worried about you, babe. Hold on. Um, Lexi says, creating toxicity when you want reassurance, almost like you'd rather do this than have a real convo because then you'd feel like they'll uh, love you even when you're being difficult. It's really fascinating. And also, I think Chelsea might have autism because Chelsea runs like a T-Rex when she's excited and she flaps her arms. And I think that's funny. And it's also very autistic. Like when I see Chelsea, I do sometimes think she has autism for sure. Maiden says masking or fulfilling the expectations instead of doing the things from an authentic self position. Mm -hmm. For sure. Green Bean says he has dumb man disorder and Chelsea has BPD. Maybe. Chelsea does have obvious abandonment issues. You know what I mean? Um, Discord says I hate to sound depressing, but this is also fake to me. No depth at all. No self-awareness. Yeah, well, remember it's also cut a specific way from the show. And I think that's interesting. Like the show wants to pick a villain. The show wants to pick a good guy. The show does do that. That's TV, baby. Which reminds me back to that story we covered about Mr. Beast. Do you guys remember the Mr. Beast story about the tag, the girl who's playing tag? And remember when she was like, I can't believe he cut me out of the story. I was like, have you seen Love is Blind? They literally cut absolute all the context to make the show better. Like, I don't know how these people don't understand that's how it works. But anyways, you know what I mean? It's just so interesting. You had me really worried. I got back after being gone all day. You like Kelvin says, bro, feels like he's ready in a 10 year marriage before it's even started. Bro, I was so I wouldn't date anyone on the show. They were all so exhausting, though. I did like the couple that actually made it to the altar. Walked in and you're like, so you didn't kiss me one time today. I did, I did kiss you today, though. This morning? I kissed you when you're in the bathroom. Getting ready. Did you? Mm -hmm. So I just demand kisses. 
I walk up to my husband and I say, kiss me now. Do it. Kiss me. And then that's a part of it. Like we just kiss all the time though. We're like literally, if we even see each other for a second, we're like making out. But that's because like, why not? Nobody lives with us. You know what I'm saying? So like if I want to kiss, you know, you demand it. And then they give it to you because they love you because that's like the chemistry, right? Like when I go honk my boob, if I sometimes I'll just walk up to my husband, I'm like, touch my boob, touch me, touch my butt, touch me. <laughs> I'm the touchy, I'm the needy, like physically needy partner. So I'm like, touch me, touch me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just ask, just be like, you know, I want your attention. You know what I mean? But the problem is I think with Chelsea and other people, they kind of want you to read their mind. I hate reading minds. I refuse to do it. But they want you to like want them. And by the way, Jimmy did kiss her multiple times. And then she had the narrative that he never kissed her because it wasn't, I think, in the imagery that she wanted or maybe in the visual she wanted or maybe it wasn't good enough. But like, yeah, girl, you want it? Ask for it, girl. Just be like, yo, I want you. Do something. Do it. I want it. Do it. You know what I mean? Again. Again. Okay. Peace and love. Peace and love. I'm sorry. Kiss you on your cheek. And then before your friends came over, before my last meeting of the day, I kissed you like right here. Because <laughs> you was like right after you got done getting ready. Mm -hmm. I'll work on kissing you a little bit more. No, babe, that's not it. <laughs> my main concern is like. I think she's trying to say something really real, but she doesn't have the words to do it. If I'm being very compassionate towards Chelsea, she obviously has a lot of trauma. She's been cheated on multiple times. She's super toxic. She's the pretty girl in her group, which says a lot, you know. And she's got a lot of problems, jealousy, envy, insecurity, anxiety. So I think, I think she's trying to tell Jimmy something she doesn't have the words for. So like a child, she uses, well, you didn't kiss me today. That's not really kisses that she wants. Well, you didn't look at me enough today. That's not what she's saying. I didn't get the right kind of attention that reassured me about the closeness and intimacy of this relationship. Something, 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 something. I can't read Chelsea's mind, but it's something, something, something. It's not about the kisses. And the problem is, is dumb men, Jimmy's the dumb man trope, goes, I kissed you though, but I did it. And yes, and this is where men create the stereotype in this category of people. They create the stereotype of women always talk in double speak and men have to guess what they're saying. And it's like, yes, if you have this kind of dynamic, which sounds exhausting, that is why that stereotype exists in heterosexual relationships. The dumb man who has to think about what his wife is saying because she's actually saying something she doesn't mean because she hasn't gone to therapy to learn enough about her own self and she hasn't done the introspection work to actually say what she wants. You know what I mean? Like genuinely, I know my neediness now at, to such a degree. And again, I also in my 20s struggled with this, which is why I got the help I needed. I literally just go up to my partner and say, hey, I would like two hours of your time today. Here's what my work schedule is. If I don't get it, that attention from you at some point, I'm going to feel like we didn't have enough intimacy today. And he'll go, OK, cool. I will see you at six. And I go, cool. And then we schedule in some time together. And then we have our intimacy time, whatever that looks like, watching anime together, cuddling, kissing, whatever. The idea is that I know, much like getting my breakfast in in the morning, I'm going to need my physical affection. And if I don't get my physical affection, I'm going to be sad. And we don't need to be sad in a marriage where somebody loves you and like wants to be with you. So asking them to spend time with you is not a chore. And that's the other thing. My partner also does that. Hey, I would like to see you. When do I get to see you today? And it's like, oh, okay, you, I got to work right away in the morning. So I have to have my coffee while I'm editing, but I'll see you for lunch. And then when we see each other for lunch, we, you know what I'm saying? We schedule in our time, um, but it's a less, it's less black and white. It's just more like we negotiate for the day because we're both, you know, neurodivergent. We wake up every day and we only have so many spoons. We only have so much time and, you know, everything needs to be kind of discussed on a daily basis. Um, does that make sense? Like, and when you do say I love you, you don't really like say, it's just kind of like, mm, love you. And I know you don't want me just to go through the motions just to say it or just kiss you. See how they're self-aware enough to actually say out loud, like, okay, you don't want me just to perform love. You want to know I love you. How do you know someone loves you though, outside of sex and convenience? I really think it's values based. I think, you know, if you love a consciousness, um, and if you more than love them, um, how do I say this? Because you can love somebody and not be with them. I think the kind of love they're explaining and having a conversation about 
is a love of the whole consciousness. And I genuinely think you're able to express that much easier when you have the same values and you genuinely want the same thing from each other and life. When is this, when there's symbiosis, when you have a symbiotic relationship, right? You're working together. It's like a perfect compatibility. So for me, when I look at them, I see them being self-aware. They both know enough, but they're both also keeping their cards close to their chest. They're also got, both of them have so many walls up. Okay. They're both plenty smart. They're both plenty dumb. They're both plenty without the tools, but they're, they know better because they're saying it out loud right now. It's like, you don't want me to just go through the motions. You want me to actually be in it. So when I say my husband and I schedule stuff out, that sounds like we're going in the motions. We're not. It's because we need it and we want it and we're so excited for it. But we're also grown adults who have responsibilities. We have to go to work. We have stuff to do. You know, things have to happen. So Jimmy works from home. He has to go to work. He has shittiest to do. I don't know what Chelsea's doing with her life. But it's like, yeah, we can schedule out intimacy time because we have a life to do. But also I want it so much and I just can't wait to get off work so I can hug you and kiss you and love on you. So it's like I'm not doing it because it's a part of our schedule. I'm making it a part of our schedule because I want it. And I think she's terrified that he's just putting it on a checklist every day so he can get it over with and say, I did my husband duty, which by the way is how, when I hear couples say that that's how they feel about their intimacy, that tells me they settled. When I hear a couple who says, yeah, we had sex. Um, it's our weekly sex time, you know, just checking off the box. I'm like, same with having kids, same with buying a house, same with going to college. Oh yeah, just checked it off the box. It's like, when are you actually going to live life for you, bro? You know what I mean? Britt says, as the season goes on, Jimmy seems way smarter. I mean, I think everyone's way smarter. But isn't it also like, uh, I think I think they're all way smarter than they play on TV. Because if you come off too smart, then you can't be excused from some of your dumb. You know what I'm saying? It's almost better to play dumb. But I do think overall, Jimmy's kind of airheaded in general throughout the show. More than other people just because I know you want it that's not you to want me I did want you <laughs> I asked you to marry me because I am a hundred percent invested and in going to do everything in my power to make you my wife and mm -hmm. I want to have a life with you I want that more than anything at this point you gave me this I know I did I do love you I, I, I want to feel it and I don't really feel it right now today and yesterday I didn't I didn't really feel yeah I think they're both saying like I don't think I'm into you or I'm not compatible with you but see how they're forcing it? You won't have to force it. And that's what I'm saying. With the right person, it's not about forcing. You know, and I think a lot of that comes from shared values. You you love the way this person brain, like their brain works, their values work, like who they are. And then there's the va-va-voom. Va-va-voom is easy, guys. For a lot of people, it's easy. And if you're demisexual, it's going to be even easier when you really like the person. But it's about liking the actual person feel any love from you i'm not gonna be able to tell you i love you every single hour of the day just because i'm working from home i love you to death and i really do care about you know what i do it's every time i walk by his office i say i love you and then that's what that's what we do we just say i love you all the time anytime we pass by each other's doors i love you but we're dumb romantics so yes i work from home and i'm not going to be able to give my attention and sometimes i'm so warped like i'm so focused on my work i forget i have a husband genuinely and he's so busy with his stuff, sometimes he forgets he's married. Yes, even with us, we hyper-focus on whatever we're doing. And for hours, I will literally forget I am married. And then I'll be like, oh, I have a husband. And I'll get up and I'll go kiss him and be like, I just remembered you exist. And then I'll come back to my work. Yeah. You know, but it's about knowing that and being so secure in the relationship. You also don't have to worry. She's not secure enough in the relationship. You can't ask this woman to be secure in a relationship where... It's on TV. It just formed. It feels like settling. The love isn't there. The values and the compatibility isn't even there. It's obviously like for show in a lot of ways. Of course, she's not going to feel secure. Hello? But truthfully, you've been a little clingy. Clingy? Well, you're saying you want me to give you more. She is being clingy. Like I am needy, but I am respectful. She is clingy and disrespectful. But she's not disrespectful in the way of his work. She's disrespectful in the way of herself. She doesn't, she's, it's very trauma based to me. There's no dignity in it. Like I'm a very needy person. I love my partner, but obviously like be respectful of other people's time and their consent and their boundaries. 
And I don't think she's able to do that because it's all about her trauma and what she needs. She just needs some really good therapy and some really good philosophy. I love and affection. I feel like you're giving me too much. Clingy? I felt like... Are you fucking kidding me? You and your clingy clingy? No. And obviously clingy is going to be super triggering to someone who already has abandonment issues and has attachment issues. So obviously I understand why that word is super triggering for Chelsea. That's fucking rude. I really do love you. I feel like shit. For you to say I'm clingy when I'm trying to do things for you to prove to you like... I'm hey, telling you how I feel. I love you. I'm telling you how I feel. See, I'm trying to do stuff to prove to you I love you. I don't do stuff to prove to my husband I love him. I do stuff because I love him. I do not do acts of kindness or service for my husband because I'm proving I love him. I do them because I'm thinking about him and I love him and I'm taking him into consideration. Maiden says, is there a worse way for a traumatized mentally ill person to find love than on a reality TV show, self-harm? You know, I think these shows probably wouldn't work without it. Like, you know how streamers are definitely all like neurodivergent, definitely like a mental illness plays into it in trauma in some aspect because you're willing to put yourself out there in a very particular way. I think like reality TV shows feel the same. I was really raised in the era of reality TV shows and I always thought to myself, like, I'm not fucked up enough to go on one of those. And even now when I watch Love is Blind, I'm like, yeah, I'm not fucked up enough to go on Love is Blind, but I'm a streamer. So I must be fucked up in some way. And obviously you guys know my trauma history. So obviously I didn't just end up on the internet because I was healthy and adjusted. I might be healthy and adjusted now, but it didn't start off that way. And I think like realizing that about myself was really relieving because genuinely I know people look at me and think like I could not stream in the same way that I look at reality TV show people I'm like I could not do that I'm not fucked up enough to do that people think the same thing about my job now you can be well adjusted and I think healthy being in reality TV eventually but I do think the thing that originally brings you to it is the same thing that brings people to streaming something is fucked up Amaris says reality TV is like a BPD playground, bro. True, true, true. Kenny says, I just realized that reality TV shows aren't as big as they were anymore, but I may be out of the loop, maybe out of touch. Well, they're mostly on like Netflix and things. So I, I used to watch reality TV when I was a kid because I would sneak it. My parents would never let us watch it, but I would sneak MTV. Then I was never really into it because I thought it was so fake and it is fake. But also... I watch it now on Netflix because there's like certain shows I really like, like Love is Blind. And I think that's interesting or even Love on the Spectrum. Like there's different kinds of reality shows now, reality dating shows. These ones are meant to be salacious and drama filled and toxic. And that's that's the show. They cut them this way too, guys. Remember, the show is edited to show the worst parts of these people. Like imagine if you and I were edited down to our worst parts. We'd look crazy. So in their defense, we would look crazy. You know what I mean? And also streamers, that happens to streamers. How many streamers are clip, clipped out of context and just look crazier than they are because people want to do that? And also, you know what my favorite reality TV show is? <laughs> it's called Your Streams. <laughs> Talk about watching reality TV, but all at the same time, we're at work. You know what I mean? Okay, well then that says a lot. That's not your whole personality now. I'm saying the last few days it have, you have been a little clingy. All right, well expect a lot less from me now because that's fucking bullshit. I love you and I want to be with you. And now she's pulling away and punishing him with coldness and because she's feeling hurt. So they're both like just triggering the fuck out of each other, right? She smothers him. He asks for space. She takes it personal. Okay. I will say, and I mean this with peace and love, one of the ways I am so great in my marriage is actually uh, consent-based. My partner and I understand that anytime either of us asks something of the other, like giving us space, we know it is about consent, not about our egos. So when my partner says like, I'm overstimulated, I'm gonna go to my office, is that okay? He is not saying you are the problem and I need to get away from you. He's saying, I am feeling overwhelmed. I need some space. Is that okay? Of course. I love you. That's why we have an office. Same with me. When I say, I would love to hang out with you right now, but also I'd rather get this thing done for work. Is that okay that I go work and then I see you in a couple hours? I'm not saying I love work more than my husband. 
I'm saying right now my brain is hyper focused on this problem and I would like to solve it while I'm in the mode when I'm in the mode like I'm in the I'm riding the train the high I would like to solve this problem for work and then once I'm done with it I will come and give you all of my attention right so again you know when I think about my relationship I'm thinking about it from a consent perspective it's not my job to disrespect his boundaries. It's my job to listen to his needs and facilitate an environment where he can request, you know, and let me know that's what he needs and then support him in that effort. Megan, do you want to find me today, girl? Because I'm feeling sassy. Megan says, Brittany has strong opinions about things she has no authority to talk about. Um, Your mom. So... Dude, I want a life with you. You didn't kiss me once today. I did. You never tell me you I love me. You okay. I'm about to marry you. By the way, she could actually believe this in some capacity because she could actually like be forgetting because, you know, memory is really interesting when it comes to trauma. So she could just be triggered. She could be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, this is a huge, huge deal for me. It's a huge deal for me too. Because I'm clingy. I'm so fucking tired of this shit. Like... <laughs> I was genuinely annoyed that you asked me like five times. I get that. I hate that too. What's, I what's wrong with that. me? And like, I asked you twice. So I felt a little smothered. If so she's like out of it. She's now out of the trigger. And it's probably a medical trigger for Chelsea, right? Looks like a medical trigger. So she's out of the trigger. And she's saying, oh, she's joking about it now. She's being more casual. And this is the problem with mental health. She has to be able to say to Jimmy or her partner, hey, um, I think I'm having a problem right now and I'm going to make you the enemy when I don't mean to. Can I just have a few minutes alone? She needs she needs to be able to have the right words, the right like language to explain to whoever her partner is, hey, I think it might be me. Can you give me a moment? I'm so sorry. You know what I mean? If I thought that you were clingy to the point where there was no return, I would not be here. I wouldn't want anything to do with you. I'm sorry and I love you. I'm here for you. I want to make you happy. I want to be with you. I plan to be with you forever. I love you and I want nothing I more than a future you. with you. Don't Jenny. leave me again. I won't leave you. I don't know if you went home. I don't know if you went to the bar. I didn't know. You think I went to the bar? I don't know. Jesus. <laughs> at work. I thought about coming back too. She's always worried he's at the bar when he's just working. But also she said she got cheated on in her past relationship. So. I did text you and tell you I love you. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. So I was so cranky with you this morning. I was like, man, I'm so mad at him, but I love him with all my heart. Like, I love you. I had one drink and I came home. But is that something I'm going to deal with? You said you did not do anything in the pods. You said. So now in the pods, they're talking about how often they're so, how often they socialed. And, um, like, she was under the impression he didn't socialize very often. But the irony is like they're both on a TV show that requires a lot of socialization to promote the show. So he's just going out to the bar, seeing friends, seeing other people from the show. And she's just twisting this in a way that is probably coming from her trauma where she like wants him to choose her instead of going out. And he was only away for about an hour. But like it's interesting how she's just such a good example of somebody in their trauma. And Jimmy is somebody who's not trauma aware you know what I mean and so it's kind of interesting I understand like I'm not a very social person I don't want somebody who's going to bars I don't want someone who's socializing a lot but my husband does go out with his friends on occasion and they go to the bar I just don't go because like I don't want to go but obviously like if I wanted to go they they would love to have me there I just I don't want to go you know I just don't want to you know if I want to go I can go is what I'm trying to say but I don't make it about him I see this as an opportunity to call my sister catch up with my mom do stuff around the house but she sees it as like, what am I going to do now? You know what I mean? <gasps> Megan, please stop self-harming. It's so sad to see. Guys, I don't want self-harming in my chat. Ugh, Megan's going to have to be blocked now. Oh, rip. Rip to Megan. Wishing her the best on her journey. Enjoy that sunset, girl. Okay, so when I see Jimmy and Chelsea, I see like two people consistently miscommunicating. Because they literally don't even understand where the other person is coming from. So let's see how much of this conversation they show. I, I'm not into going out. I'm not like, that's not my thing. I, I would want to travel more than once a month. Friday, Saturday night, like go to dinner. Anything I can do with you to like get out of our place, like it would be fun. Jamie sounds social as fuck. Everything you just said is exactly what I want. You sat there and lied to me. 
And also, like, she could go with him out. But, like, she obviously doesn't want to, which is also funny. I do like to go out every once in a while. And I don't, I, I don't I just like want that. you to understand so why I'm like I wanted this whole time is someone who just literally wants to live life. I haven't went out in three months. So like, Neither have me. I. I love you. And I, I want to be around you. But, like, you're not giving me much. I have been away from you for, like, a total of, like, three and a half hours. You're like I'm, like, extensively partying since you've met me. Who were you with last night? Who were you with last night? Where do you go when, you, when you're not here? Where do you I, go when you work? Here. Really? Here. Do you? I went to my apartment one day. Who are you with? So if you guys don't know, they stay in the pods for, I think, two months. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And then the last month, they're out of the pods, and they're in specified apartments that the show gives them. But they also can go back to their real apartments. And so when he says, I was back at my apartment, that's because they both have their own places, technically. But they also have this shared unit that the show provides for them. Well, I was in bed, and you were out you know what I think? at a bar. I think you're fishing. When I'm getting told that you're out at a bar when I I'm think... in bed. What did you do last night when you left? What did you say to me? I'm going out. I'm going out. That's not the kind of person I want to be with. It makes me really... Again, this is something I see in people that settle. Instead of breaking up because they don't want to be the one who breaks up, they pick fights with the other person saying, I don't want to be with that kind of person. And when that person is fed up and they break up with them, they're like, I tried, but they broke up with me. Or, right, or, right, um, they're both hoping the other person breaks up and they're secretly like, commute, like even Jimmy, I feel like Jimmy does it too. He's like, I love you. I love you. Like what? I love you. And he's like, whoa, we're so compatible. What? But like he knows they're not compatible. He knows they're not compatible. You know what I mean? Really, really question what the fuck I've done. <laughs> this conversation. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be with someone who's who wants to go out a lot like you do. I love you. I'm in this for you. Do you not think that I care about season three, four? Which was the season with the black couple with the girl who was really, really sweet and the guy who was like really, really partying? Do you remember that is the couple who goes out? She was like really, really wholesome and wanted to stay inside. And he was like a partier. They were the ones who got divorced. I don't remember their name now. Season three, I think. Season two, maybe. Oh, God, it was so long ago. She was really sweet. Well, one of the problems is like he was going out every night. He wasn't going out once in a while. He was going out every night. And it was his lifestyle. Jimmy is just like a country boy from a town of 500 people. Like, he's just socializing. You know, he's just doing his thing. But also, like, that's fair for her not to want this. You would think they would just break up. I, Anna, and Jared, yes. Yes. Remember them? Remember Jared seemed nice enough, but that man liked to go out. And... That's a different vibe than staying up and like watching TV shows together. You know what I mean? So it is kind of interesting. About you? You don't. You don't think that I love you? You have showed me. If you don't think I love you, I don't want to be here. You don't think I love I. If you, if you don't think I love you, I don't want to be here. Almost, almost a good boundary. Almost a good boundary. But he missed the mark, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, in my opinion, she, he should have said um, something like, I feel like we're not as compatible as I thought. And I think we'd be better off with other people, something like that or on our own. But they can't even do that because it's like, oh, I'm going to put all the blame on you, which is why I don't believe in blame. Don't cast blame. Take responsibility and say, like, this isn't working for me. Love you. I don't know. Please don't leave. Stop. Stop. I mean, this morning, my perspective on getting married. And then every time it escalates too high, she goes, no, stop. Stay. I love you. Every time they escalate, no, stop, Jimmy. Jimmy, stop. I love you, Jimmy. I you know, decided I didn't want to. So you're saying no. You're saying that I'm not giving you any love and affection. And I feel like I'm giving you as much as I possibly can give. I apologize. And the things that I said were things that were bothering me and really heavy on my heart. Was my delivery good? No. I fell more in love with you yesterday than I ever have. What else can I do to make you feel like well, this could be a yes? Do I forgive you for the other night? I do. Look how hard they're fighting to keep a failing relationship going. 
Too many of you are doing that right now. I love you. I care about you. And I really want, I really want to try. I love you. And I, I love you too. I really want to try with you. But you can't come dressing like that when I'm mad at you. You look good. I, the, with peace and love, this is my biggest pet peeve in people. I'm mad at you. You're the worst person ever. But love me, baby. Fight kind of dwindles. Escalation goes down. You're so handsome. Don't come dress like that next time because it makes me want to fuck you. You know what I mean? Like, what? Like, that's the thing that always shocks me is like people escalate, 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 escalate. And then to normalize the conversation, say something even more fucking annoying. Like, it's so inappropriate. But hey, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? Made it says they trigger each other but don't have the introspection to end it without causing each other enough suffering to motivate them to do so. Bruh. Kay says, geez, bro, that's some toxic shit. Gave me PTSD here and that. That's what I'm saying. People really do end up in toxic. That's why I'm saying like toxic relationship, toxic relationship. It doesn't mean they're bad people. I don't think Chelsea's a bad person. I don't think Jimmy's a bad person, guys. They're not evil people. They're just super fucked up and they need some therapy. And Chelsea needs to like, get her shit together, which by the way, like spoiler, they don't end up, they don't, they break up. But like, it is one of those things where again, do you get what I'm saying? Like toxic, but none of them are evil. I think most of the world is in toxic settling relationships because they, they just don't have the time to introspect. They don't have the time to go to the therapy they need. They don't have time to even wonder like, why am I settling in a relationship? Because that's what they've seen mimicked around them too anyways. When Jimmy takes Chelsea to meet his family, the dad even makes a joke, uh, something like uh, the marriage is great and stuff, but even couples fall into making some sort of stereotypical joke like ball and chain or he, Jimmy's dad doesn't do this. Jimmy's dad says something like, if there's one thing about your mom, it's her trinkets, which autism, but like also not as a joke, but also, you know, they seem like a little like, so anyways, there's like, you see the love that's mimicked and you kind of want it, but you also don't understand how it worked or how it didn't work. So you'll have husbands who say like, oh, the ball and chain is calling. And I'm like, versus the husband are like, oh, my wife is calling. Bye, bitch. It's like, you know, everyone has a different relationship. But I grew up with a father who's like, oh, my wife is calling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like we have, you know, if my mom called my dad, he'd be like, because my mom, one, would never interrupt inappropriately. And two, would only ever ask for his attention when appropriate. That's the thing. Do you know when to appropriately ask for your partner's attention? Actually, here, I'll throw myself under the bus. In my 20s, I was really inappropriate with how and when I needed physical affection. So like I had a hard time not like it was it became like a cope. Like if I was in public with my partners or if, even if I was at a family gathering, I would like use my partner as like a safety blanket which was like ended up being socially inappropriate because it's too PDA. But it was like, and even now I have to fight myself from physically like reaching out for my partner to get like that reassurance because I know like it's not socially acceptable. But it's one of those things where I had to learn like, okay, you're doing this because you need comfort. You need to comfort yourself in a different way, like your high anxiety right now. And so even in my 20s, I was inappropriate when I asked for physical affection because it wasn't the right time. You have to learn the right time to seek out the right kind of attention. And this is a skill. I love you. I love you. Love you too. So you're gonna make me cookies or what? Some days it's hard for both of us. Today, I feel really, really, really good. I love you so much. And I, love I have you. no doubt in my mind that you're my person. We're gonna get married because I haven't even got a grasp of where you're at. We haven't talked about it, so we I haven't. don't have a clue. <laughs> um. Okay, so they end up breaking up. Spoiler. Again, the thing that was interesting was the way they communicated, the dynamic, the way they held conversations. Like, ultimately, I have no problem. Zero problem with people being traumatized, with people having to go through it, with people learning about themselves. The dilemma is how much hurt are you going to cause another person while you're in recovery? 
How much hurt are you going to cause another person before you realize like you're part of the problem? And I don't think many people are willing to have that conversation with this, themselves because it is kind of embarrassing, which is why I say like it takes two to have a toxic relationship. Healthy people don't stay in toxic relationships. So if you're in a toxic relationship, you have to look at yourself. Don't blame your partner. Hold yourself accountable. Obviously, people can hurt you and they are responsible for that action. But that's on, let's say, let's say you're in a situation where your partner cheats on you. And you're sitting here blaming your partner for cheating on you and that's why you're being mean to them. Not appropriate. Do you get to be mean to people because they did you wrong? I hope not. But some people have those values. Now, it's still on the cheater's like shoulders to be responsible for the fact that they cheated on you. But that doesn't mean you get to abuse a cheater because they cheated on you. You can't abuse people because they hurt you or because they abused you. I personally don't think that's the most introspective thing to do. It's not the most kind or compassionate thing to do. You are allowed to disagree with me, right? So when I see this show and I see these two people with each other, I think, yeah, they're both toxic and they're both like depending on each other to fuel that toxicity because they don't know how to be mature enough to pull away from the relationship. Now, eventually, I think they did it okay. When, this, when that, that last conversation we saw, they actually did basically end things. So they never went to the altar. He never rejected her at the altar. They talked about it many times. The camera, obviously the show cut the, the, show cut the scenes, but they did multiple times um, even slightly on the show, I think they did talk about how they were struggling to get to the altar, right? But if Chelsea and, and, and Jimmy had ended up together, truly, they would have been so settling. So I'm actually kind of relieved and happy for both of them that they broke that relationship off because it just would have been a bad decision all around. So in the end, kind of good news that they broke up. Now, I want to talk about AD and Clay AD all day. AD and Clay are by far, well, I love AD, but AD and Clay are another couple that's quite, you know, controversial isn't the word, but complicated in their own right. So here's AD and Clay. AD and Clay were both beautiful looking, both accomplished in their own ways, both had really interesting parents, minus Clay's dad. We'll get into that. Both were very... They just held a lot of potential, but neither of them were secure enough in who they were to have the healthiest relationship with one another, which makes sense. They ended up on a show called Love is Blind. No offense. And I think it it takes a certain kind of person to end up on this show, even though I love it. So as we jump into Clay and AD, keep in mind that Keep in mind that even when you're so successful, you can be so lacking in introspection. Introspection does not always mean monetary success or vice versa. Just because you're very successful, college graduate, good job, good life, handsome, blah, 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 doesn't mean you're very introspective. So let's check this out together. I found a video. I'm going to put it or put it in the chat here. 12 red flags you should never ignore, AD and Clay. I'm really excited. I think it's a good video and I think we should watch it to help us discuss um, the show. Daya says, do you think AD was over sexualized in the show? I feels like anyone talked about was her body. Well, I think first of all, her body is amazing. She's in her 30s. She's definitely body goals. I think all the women were heavily sexualized, especially Jessica. I actually prefer the way AD was because she really worked for that body. Like, AD works out. She actually worked for that body. So I actually really like that. But AD sexualized herself. Did you know that AD, and forgive me for saying it out loud, but she like white girl flirted so much. She put on her like high pitched girl voice. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. Stop. Thank you, Jimmy. You think my butt's nice? Like she puts on like, this white girl high pitched voice, like valley girl voice, you know? Oh my God, yes. Oh my God, AD. Oh my God, Clay. Oh my God, Jimmy. Oh my God. Like, AD does that. I love her. She's so, like, okay, her long eyelashes drove me crazy, but like, her body's fucking, her face beautiful, like, her mind beautiful. But like, she was too insecure to not use her body as a means of validation, in my opinion. And that's okay. We've all been there. I get it. So let's go ahead and check this out. And we'll see what you guys think. These are the 12 red flags. Hello, hello. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Ashley Calazare. Hi, Ashley. And listen. 
AD all day. Look at that. AD all day. And we are coming up on Love is Blind Season 6 Reunion. What is it? This Wednesday? Yes, this Wednesday. Also, shout out to AD talking to Sarah Ann and holding her feet to the fire. Because, like, I hate cheaters and I hate bitches that try to break up relationships. And I think it's so rude to be the other woman. It is so rude to be the other man. Stop hitting on people that are engaged or married or busy. And just to lead us into this crazy reunion that we are about to witness, I want to go back a little bit and talk about Clay and AD. All right. There are some. Look, Clay. Okay. I knew the moment. I knew the moment I saw Clay. I was like. He is too handsome for this show. He's a fuck boy. And look, he wasn't exactly a fuck boy, but I think he was all along more. But like, he's too handsome and he talks too pretty not to be a player. Okay. So I, I appreciated how Clay spoke and I got a couple of clips to show you, but like, girl, meeting his dad explained so much. And if you guys know, you know, when Clay's dad showed up on TV, I was like, Everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. Everything makes sense. It's so clear. So Clay is so handsome. He is by far, I think, the most handsome guy who showed up on the show this season. And AD is the prettiest girl that showed up on the show this season. In my opinion, they were the most attractive people on the whole show. Period. And I think by luck, they ended up together in a way, right? Um, Raya says, are you going to react to the reunion? Yes, I've got videos and videos and videos. We're going to get through it. Some red flags that we all have been talking about that AD missed. Mm -hmm. Okay, and this is no pun to AD. This has nothing to do with, you know, making her feel bad or just saying that it's solely her fault. Monet says, I get instantly turned off by clay types. They come off so slimy. They do. You know what's fucking crazy? Can we just talk about it really fast? If you know, you know. Clay's trope, his specific category of man they say things that almost sound good. You almost want to believe it. This is what I think eight happened to AD. Oh, this is going to sound so weird. You, but okay, you'll get it. He's aesthetically the goal, the dream, but that aesthetic comes with the the sacri like the consequence of the slimy. That's why I say like I don't trust attractive people cuz you spend a lot of time being attractive, your soul is neglected I do I do think it's nice to look good I think it's nice to look organized and groomed but I think if you're way too into looks and aesthetic and remember that Clay asked AD what he she looked like remember that Cl Clay asked AD what she looked like because he's shallow and I think that says a lot about your character Green Bean says did AD miss the red flags no like AD is toxic too she chose him that was the most disappointing part as just a woman who's who's stopped picking toxic partners. It was so relatable to me when AD picked Clay knowing better because I was like, she hasn't broken the cycle of toxicity. But she had hoped he would be the one. He would be the hot guy who was Prince Charming and actually be a good person. Now, ugly guys can also be assholes, okay? Don't get it confused. But there's an aura around Clay's that like, it doesn't work that way. You know, so again, AD knew she said it. She said it out loud, y'all. She literally said he's got the flags. He's got that toxic. I see flags. And I'm going to pick him anyways. Now, to be fair, her two attractive partners, the two guys she was into was Clay and what's the crazy guy's name? I loved Clay's reaction to it, too. What was the crazy guy's name she was also into? I can't remember his name. The autist who's maybe not autistic, but a serial killer. The serial killer. What was his name? Oh, my God. How am I blinking? When Clay found Matthew. Oh, my God. When she's like, when Clay's like, who else are you talking to? And AD's like, I'm talking to Matthew. He was like, Matthew? Who the fuck is Matthew? Clay was so offended to even be in the same league as Matthew. And I have never laughed so hard in my fucking life. When Clay was like, Matthew, who the fuck is Matthew? He was like, he didn't even put Matthew on his radar. And same, why was AD into the two most toxic guys in the pods? It says a lot about AD, doesn't it? And I love, I'm team AD, but like. Well, this video is actually to help 
all of us when it comes to dating. And maybe these red flags that I point out will make you think to yourself like, hmm, my man and my girl does the same oh. thing. So maybe What the fuck happened? Oh my God, Green Bean, relax. Do not lump psychotic dummy with autism. I mean, psychopathic dummy with autism. I mean, same thing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But some people with autism also are psychopaths. Don't discriminate. We need to represent fairly here. He could have been both. Maybe I should double think this, or maybe I should think twice about moving forward with them. Mm -hmm. Now, I am newly married to my <gasps> amazing husband, Congrats. but when I was dating, like these are some red flags that I saw that I am so happy I ran as fast as possible from. And then when I found my husband and I didn't see these red flags, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, this is the one. And AD and Clay are the perfect examples to go through some of the red flags I'm so that. Excited you may see when dating that you yes. definitely need to run for the hills from all right let's get into it number one so clay makes it very clear very early on to ad that he does not provide emotional security i've never felt like i was chose by the one like that i wanted i guess maybe the way i come off maybe i don't provide that sense of security emotionally mm -hmm. Now, why is emotional security super important, you ask? Okay. Obviously, they sped up the voices for copyright, so just FYI. Listen, so emotional security in a relationship. Shadow Boxer says autism, autism is thrown around way too much these days. Sounds autistic. Have you gotten tested, buddy? Ship is <laughs> about building trust. Like, it has a lot to do with being able Woo! to foster and have open communication. AD wants to be supportive, right? She wants to be someone's cheerleader. She doesn't want to write someone off because they struggle. She wants to be someone, like, she's in her 30s. I didn't realize she was my age. She's a little younger than me. She's looking fantastic, honestly, goals. But, like, there is this um, thing about her where, like, she doesn't want to write people off, but she really should start doing that. Okay. I get to learn that, too. I get to learn to write people off because everyone's like, don't write them off. They could be great. They could be perfect. Write them off. You know what I mean? Like, I used to do that, too. Like, living for people's potential. Write them off. You're done. Be wise with when you give people a chance because... Mm. Patient. It allows you to be vulnerable and authentic. And when your partner is not giving you emotional security or doesn't make you feel emotionally secure, then you're unable to really express your true self without having fear. You're unable to really express and be vulnerable um, without knowing for sure that your vulnerability and your emotions are going to be taken care of and going to be considered. Yo, her long eyelashes drove me crazy all season, bro. All season, they were so long for no reason. It makes you feel accepted. It makes you feel like you belong. Ultimately, like emotional security is a key factor in long-term relationships. It's a key factor in being satisfied. It's a key factor in enhancing intimacy. Now, I'm not talking about sexual intimacy. I'm talking about emotional intimacy, mm -hmm. which there is a difference, all right? See, when Clay said, like, no one's ever made me feel like this. No one's given me the space. AD went, I could give you the space. I could make you feel this way. I, I could be that girl. Right? <laughs> Wait a second. Now, I just can't assume that everybody knows the difference because it's often confused, okay? So here is the difference. Physical intimacy is like hand-holding, kissing, you know, all the physical stuff, cuddling, sex. Oh, that's a nice graph. I love a little graph. I love a little graph, let me tell you. I love a little graph. Spiritual rituals, mindfulness, yoga, stretching, connecting, nature, love that. Physical intimacy, hand-holding, cuddling, kissing, Hugs, washing each other's hair, sexual, penetrative, masturbative, masturbation, mental, watching documentaries, intellectual conversations, emotional, sharing feelings, energetic, going to a concert, eye gazing, hiking. Ooh, I love this vibes. And emotional intimacy is being able to talk about hard things, being able to be vulnerable, being able to get through hard conversations, being able to even talk about feelings, period. Basically, emotional security provides an environment to create <gasps> green beans as ad wants the avoided man to feel special when he chooses her yo i 
I do think that's true. I think that's true for a lot of really successful women. I think certain categories of very successful women want to feel like the princess. So they end up feeling chosen by men who are unavailable because they're as, quote, busy as they are. So when they are chosen by these high value men, they feel like he picked me. I got picked. love and growth so that your relationship can flourish let's go into number two in this next scene of episode one clay unapologetically explains how shallow he can be and how on a show called love is blind physical attraction is going to be way more important than emotional connection in what way do you want to talk about appearance in a experiment where we're not talking about appearance naturally i, I would say i kind of lean towards more like petite my, my favorite attribute is like lips but and all that stuff. Regardless. I was, so, the moment he talked about physicality, I was like, she should have dumped him. That should have been it. And that wasn't enough. She didn't dump him here. And I was like, girl, this would have been it. This would have been your moment to say, nah, I'm good. And then she even says like, why doesn't anyone ever choose me at the wedding when he broke up with her? Why doesn't anyone ever choose me? I think she's in a bubble where she thinks cause she's in her thirties. She needs to be picked and chosen because she hasn't chosen herself. She won't, she hasn't picked herself. And this like disappointed me so just, it was like a knife to the gut that AD at this moment did not dump this man. Of the emotional connection. Regardless of the emotional. Yeah. yeah. Not only is this a clear sign to me that Clay lacks depth and the willingness to invest in the emotional part of their relationship, to me, this screams, I am not really interested in making a real meaningful connection. And I'm not at a place right now where a show called Love is Blind is really for me mm -hmm. at all. But hey, AD said it herself. I appreciated that Nick Lachey during the reunion was like, hey, stop coming on this show for clout. And I was like, yeah, stop ruining my reality TV show that's basically halfly or half-assed edited to be fake. Like, okay, I want to watch people fall in love, not people build their Instagrams. Also, should I join Love is Blind just for fun? I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's a joke. I'm married. That's a joke. And like he gives me the option to accept it or reject it. Number three having control of your emotions. So in episode two, Ooh. AD was telling Clay and venting to Clay about how she felt emotionally regarding Matt and all, all that whole triangle thing, right? And how Matt said, you know, he would want to ask her father for her hand and her father passed away. So it was very emotional for her. So she thought that she could express herself with Clay. Are you not feeling me or are you are? Because what you just told me has nothing to do with me. Well, what love triangle am I in? We could have that transparent convo. He gets really pissed and it becomes like emotional. And again, in his bubble, this is probably, like, attractive to some girls. Like, he's getting so mad. He wants me so badly. Like, I'm going to make him mad so he, like, demands, like, he gets me. You know what I mean? Like, some part of her brain's like, ooh, he's so mad about it. And then some part of Clay is like, what do you mean? I'm in, I'm in, I'm in compete, competition with Matthew? Matthew? He's not even as good as me. Which is Clay's, like, narcissism from his dad. You know what I mean? I mean, I don't know. Can we? You're going to regret that shit. I'm, I'm telling you, eh? like, AD, like, I don't understand. Like, like, am I not, like, saying the right things to you? Like, Yo, Chrissy, Chrissy says, dude, Trevor really threw me. I wanted to like him so bad. Bro, same, bro. Bro, same, bro. Literally. Same, bro. Aurora says, Brittany, you can make up a, uh, a plan with your husband just like Trevor. Stop. Bro, we were so on Team Trevor, and then I was thrown for a loop. That's what I'm saying. You can't trust none of these bitches. These men like Trevor coming off like sweet puppy dogs only to be like a bitch underneath. Oh, oh, ma'am. We not having the right conversations like like me, but you don't like me like that. My ego is like fucking with me so hard. But I'm really My ego is fucking with me so hard. <laughs> Clay needs to be mommied. Clay needs to be spanked. I'm trying to be very understanding. Okay, now don't I'm trying to be really understanding right now of your feelings, but like my ego is it being threatened right now. 
me wrong. I understand emotions are really, really high right now, but the way Clay reacted off of that, I just feel like that goes along with him saying he can't provide emotional security because if he could provide emotional security, he would have been able to control his emotions a little mm. bit better. There's nothing wrong with feeling the way he felt, but the way that he expressed it lacked a lot of control. Could you imagine being vulnerable with somebody like that and having to walk on eggshells because you don't know how they're going to blow a fuse or if they're going to blow a fuse or mm -hmm. how they're going to react? That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm all about you sharing your emotions, but like, do not target your upsetness at me like is not do not target your upset and you can be upset at the situation but do not target it at me ma'am because like those are your feelings they are not about me like they might be because of me but they're not about me you know you might because they're still your reaction do not target it at me girl and clay like he tries to come down he talks pretty sometimes like with therapy talk and i'll get to that in a moment but with some people, therapy is just giving narcissist tools to fuck you over better. And for some people, they're using it to actually, like, benefit themselves and other people. Which one is Clay? Which one is Clay? Which, by the way, is obviously a victim of his father and his parents' divorce. Act like that's a lot and we are all human okay i'm not perfect sometimes i can overreact but i just feel like in this specific situation it honestly was not called for <laughs> definite red flag let's move on to number four contradicting themselves now even mm. though in episode three clay definitely apologizes for his blowout the previous episode i apologize for cursing and stuff he adds words like i apologize for being a bitch but you know that's how it goes if to his apologies as if he doesn't really believe you felt a certain way or as if he really doesn't believe that he needs work or this is the wrong way of thinking if i did make you feel like that i do apologize and you know that's something i gotta work on if i'm wrong i'll definitely admit that i'm wrong because nah it ain't no if i need to know that you know that i know that you know that i know that you definitely understand where you went wrong at. Is exactly. If is like, oh, I hate when people say if when they apologize to you. Clay's lack of understanding was not only proven by him using the word if when apologizing, mm -hmm. it was also proven by when he decided to do the same thing that he just apologized for. Yeah, you gonna make me look good? I'm gonna make you look good as fuck. <laughs> I'm gonna make you look good. Also, okay, and I'm gonna say this out loud. Black people in the audience don't come for me. I think, and I hope you agree, that Clay and AD, specifically AD, well, specifically Clay and AD, were way too focused on black excellence. I'm sorry. I know it's a bubble. I know it's like very important to a specific bubble, but they were so focused on black excellence that they just came off narcissistic. They did. Because again... Just a reminder, black excellence probably doesn't have to do with cheating, doesn't probably have to do with infidelity or shallowness, money, monetary value, and the whole time all of them only cared about what they looked like. I'm going to make you look good. And I'm like, I don't, I don't know if the black community wants their black excellence to look like shallow, but like, okay. I mean, if Beyonce and Jay-Z are black excellence, I guess cheating's on the table for black excellence not recommended Beyonce herself I love her but anyways that's what it felt like I'm sorry okay it was just giving me like I didn't love it I didn't love it you know again okay don't cancel me if I'm wrong I'll definitely admit that I'm wrong but hey, our girl AD said it herself. And like he gives me the option to accept it or reject it. I mean, am I tripping so far, y'all? I think I'm on a roll. All right, so. She's doing great. This is Ashley and she's doing great. Number five. They don't get excited about anything regarding you physically until you're talking about your body. Like anything will you like imagine? Like I try not to imagine. Mm. Like, actually, I kind of got past the physical stuff. <laughs> Boy, bye. Oh, really? So you got past the physical stuff that quick, Clay? Black love. Black love, baby. Black love. Black love. Black love. Now, this part is something that I actually miss when they were saying black love, and he looks so sad. 
I don't even understand it because AD is absolutely gorgeous. So he's Gorge. the fool, but he definitely did not seem happy. Yeah, like, but to be honest, I don't think Clay will ever be happy. You know, I I agree. CJ says, I think AD just wants to be picked by anyone. I think AD wants to be picked. And Clay is looking, I think Clay, and this is me just like assuming by his father and his mother's dynamic and everything. P.S. Love his mom. But I think Clay has a deep, deep seated emptiness in his consciousness, which philosophy would help with introspection. That no one could ever fill. And I think that it's too painful for him. Therapy is great, but it's useless without philosophy in terms of being more introspective. Therapy is your mental health. Philosophy is your why, right? Therapy is a mental health why, but philosophy is a why of the consciousness. So Clay going to therapy is good, but he also needs a th- an understanding of his own morals and values and philosophy, which is why he kept saying to Clay, like, or kept saying to AD, um, you know, I'm afraid I'm going to cheat on you. I'm afraid cheating is genetic. I actually think he's saying something quite profound and maybe she'll cover it later in the video. I think when you have a narcissistic parent, it can feel genetic and maybe it is the way you take on their traits. And I think he said, when I saw my father cheat on my mom seven years in, even though they stayed together for 24, it feels like I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And I feel like it's genetic. I think when you have a narcissistic parents, from my understanding of the few books I've read, you, you will f- almost feel like their force is in you and you're doing something. You know what I'm saying? He's obviously more his father than his mother and his mother's the good person and his father is the narcissist, you know, and I don't mean NPD because we're not diagnosing here, but like, okay, so I think that no matter how beautiful AD was or how successful or how put together she was, at the end of the day, like Clay would not, not have been satisfied, you know? Vibrancy said he only went to therapy for a year and changed therapist several times. So I don't know how much he really learned. Mm, it depends. You know, it depends. Truthfully, it depends. I think you could have one session of therapy and have it click something in your brain. The question is, how many sessions do you as the individual need? And what kind of a good therapist do you need? It's pretty common to change th- therapists until you find the right one. Um, but for Clay's n- issues, he's going to need more than therapy. He's going to need philosophy. I mean, he doesn't even reciprocate when she continues to say how cute and handsome. Yes, he said she's beautiful one time, but I mean, it's an energy. It's an energy. And then even in this scene, AD's like begging for him to be like, am I pretty? Am I pretty? Am I pretty? Am I pretty? And AD's like, yeah, you're pretty. And I'm just like sitting here like, oh, bruh. You know? I was like, it's too needy, but. Again, don't you have to be a level of neediness to go on a dating show like this? Imagine you meeting somebody that you think is just fine, okay? And they tell you that you're beautiful inevitably, so easily, subconsciously. You are going to pay back the compliment because you feel the exact same way. But if you aren't attracted to them, to their looks, then you may just decide to say, oh, thank you. You're so handsome. Think so? Yeah. Yeah? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hate AD's nice girl voice. That's her public voice. I like AD when she talks normal. AD's public voice. Yeah. I'm so little, little, little. Like she has a high, like a people voice. She puts on when she's fake. And when she has a wall up and when she's insecure. And then she has her real voice. Her real voice, super cute, right? You know what I mean? So, stinky poopy boy, I might block you. You're kind of annoying. And since you say you're a therapist, you should be able to understand why you're annoying. Diagnose yourself right now. But you are being a little annoying in chat. Something about your energy is like, I don't love it. So figure it out. Girl, no. And the body is crazy. Yeah, yeah, we know, Clay. 
But let me honestly be honest. He does say that she's beautiful. This is about an energy, okay? It's about an energy. Yeah, obviously he knows he's not going to end up with her. Like he knows that. These men know they're fucking these girls over, bro. And AD really believes him, bro. I believed him. Do you know I told my husband? I was like, I swear to God, if Clay breaks AD's heart, I'm going to spank him, bro. I'm going to spank him. And he goes, there's no way he's marrying her. And I was like, I'm so mad, bro. I'm so mad at him because I really love AD and I just want the best for her. And I knew going in, I was like, Clay's going to break her heart and I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to be so pissed, bro. And he did. He done broke her heart. And she was so sad. And I'm glad she better not go back to him. I swear to God, if AD goes back to him. <sighs> Break the cycle, girl. One more time for the people in the back. It's about an energy. That's as obsessed with you mm -hmm. outside the pod. That's what's Like, I'm just like. <laughs> girl, AD, you still here? Number early signs of verbal aggression. Oh. Oh, and a little bit more of the I care about your looks more than anything else. I'll tell you. Mm. I'll be like, AD, get in that motherfucking jerk. <gasps> that way, though? Okay, so this conversation is really weird. It's, it's weird in so many ways. I was kind of like, I was deeply confused by this conversation. Because obviously, you want a partner that's blunt. Ew, they're in a situationship right now? No. Vibrancy? No. I refuse. I refuse. Green Bean says, unpopular opinion. I don't feel sorry for AD. She knew what she was doing. Yeah, I know, but I do. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? CJ says, why was your hubby sure he wouldn't marry her? Um, That's a good question. Do I remember what his reasoning was? I don't remember what his reasoning was. I would have to ask him. I I could be. I don't want to speak for him if this is wrong, but I wonder if he sensed an insecurity in Clay. It was something like he didn't he didn't seem like a man in love, you know, like and keep in mind, my partner and I are in a very specific category. Like we were in love. We courted. We were very serious. We got married. It was no joke. Like for us, we watch Love is Blind and we're like, it's not the time they're together. It's the time they spend being honest with one another. My partner and I, day one of courting, we were 1000% serious and very transparent and very honest. So I think when you watch this show, it's just clear these people aren't being honest with one another, which is not the good foundation for a relationship. So I, I think maybe it probably had something to do with that. But even in this conversation, I, my partner and I talk about each other's bodies all the time. We're always like, hey, you got fat or hey, you're looking pretty thin right now. Or hey, like I noticed this change in your body. But it's very like matter of fact and it's very much like with love and no judgment. One, because we don't care if one of us is out of shape. Like we just don't give a fuck. During Christmas, we literally made a pact of agreement that we're going to gain 10 pounds and eat as much food as we wanted. So with Clay and AD, there's like a superficiality that comes into the relationship that I think feels more painful. Because when he's saying go to the gym, get on it, I think he's making a judgment of her. Versus when I tell my partner go to the gym... That's only because like he's asked me in some capacity to make those comments or reverse it really because I'm the one who's like actively trying to work out. He's trying to encourage me to do the thing I already decided I would do. He's not commenting on my body. He's not saying I look unattractive. He's like, hey, did you do that thing you said you would do today? I was like, damn, no. And then I, you know, but I did work out today. Thank you. So again, it's, it's, I think it's the way that they have this conversation that's so uncomfortable because I think it comes with judgment. You, you will be determined to go if I said it that way. So I guess Clay just never heard of. I love you when your hair turns gray. Yeah. Okay. But the thing is, is like Clay in that moment, she gave him so many opportunities to learn, to ask her, like, how would you like me to tell you that? But also she gave him in that cut because it's edited no feedback that could have said, hey, actually, this is how I'd like to be spoken to about this thing. So I felt like they both miscommunicated at that point. But she was like, Clay, you would talk to me like that? So she's got white eyes. She's questioning him. She's signaling. And he does, by the way, end up doing okay in the conversation. He's not a complete villain in the moment, right? But still, it's like they're learning how to talk to one another. How to do, which 
sometimes you'll go over a speed bump, you know? I still want you if you gain a little weight, yeah. I think it's kind of mean, actually. And then after she is obviously showing some insecurity about whether or not he will still find her attractive even when she's pregnant with their kids. Yeah, you got it right. So at this point, I'm thinking, oh no, AD ain't going for this. This is going to be it right here. And then he says, I'm Also, can I just ask why? Hold on. Oh no, AD ain't going for this. This is going Okay, I don't like AD's bangs either. AD and Chelsea. Why why is Gen Z all about this like middle part? It just does not look good on a lot of people. And look, I have bangs, so I get it, but I feel like AD and Chelsea would look better with bangs, but I also love my bangs. You know what I mean? I just think they're like so like cute, but maybe that's just me. Like I get it. Not everybody likes bangs. Some people don't like it, but like I, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know. AD and Chelsea. I did not love their hair this season. I just said what I said. Gonna be it right here. And then he says, I'm fucked up a little bit, you know? And then just because Clay tells her that he is effed up. Like that in itself is like mm -hmm. so sexy to me. <laughs> like, yeah. Now, what in the toxicity? What in the toxic? Yeah, you and me too, Ashley. Ashley and I, we get it. <laughs> like, I don't know if I'm just like way past that, but that toxic stuff, you telling me that you so effed up and you ain't right, basically, that is not a turn on. If anything, that's going to make me uh, check, please. Honestly. <laughs> This is my feelings. I don't know who Ashley is. She's a small content creator, I think. 121 subscribers. So, like, go subscribe to Ashley. Let's go. This video is so funny. But I agree with her 100%. Like, what? But, like, people like that shit. Oh, you're a little fucked up. Ooh, I love it. How many people? When I was bragging about how healthy my relationship is, how many people? Okay, a couple. And they were super toxic. Only, like, two people were like, aren't you afraid you're going to get bored in your relationship because it's so healthy? And I was like, oh, -hoo -hoo. Ma'am, no. It would not be fair to not mention how AD and Clay were speaking and AD mentioned how her father, you know, being absent or abandoning her, you know, played a major- Didn't her father die? Wait, am I confused? Didn't her father die? Or did he, did she not know him growing up? I thought he died. Did I mishear that when I watched the season? your uh, role in her choice of men and always chasing love and she said something that you know really really hurt my heart because she's such a beautiful girl she seems so kind she seems like she means well but she tells clay that she doesn't really feel like she deserves love and that could be a huge reason why mm. she's not looking at these red flags as a red flag i think she knew they were red flags but I think she was willing to give the potentiality a chance, which is the red flag. Oh, it's both. Okay, it's both. So he left, but also he died. That's a bummer, yeah. It, parent abandonment is real, bros. Look at Clay and AD. Both with their daddy issues. You know, they both had daddy issues. I think both moms gave a lot of wisdom to the situation. Um, in my opinion, I do think... Uh, the best thing AD's mom said was like their parents shit isn't their shit, but also that's not how trauma works, but it is a nice thing to say. It's a good reminder like, hey, your parents shit isn't your shit, but obviously like generational trauma, it does become your shit because like they raised you. Because she's trying to just attach yes, and true. hold green on to- Sorry, Green Bean says dying can be interpreted as abandonment in our weird monkey brains, true. Any type of love possible the same way that i'm sure you know she felt with her father like wanting love trying to connect to someone who will love her and hope okay guys i sky and poopy pants and all these people i swear the same usernames because they all have like similar icons guys oh my god are you like in love with me <laughs> am i being love bombed right now you're not a therapist Brittany. stop using mh lingo what training do you have and trauma-informed care. I'm not a therapist, bro. But if you don't like the way I talk, it's okay. I'm going to block you. <laughs> oh, I'm so funny. Oh, my God. I'm so powerful. I'm so powerful, bros. Oh, my God. I'm so powerful. Oh, look at these arms, baby. I'm so powerful, bro. I'm so powerful.
hold on to them and Ugh. regardless of the red flag oh, I'm so strong. Really truly Ooh. something that I don't think I deserve guys like the stream thank you so much like the stream or you're an all narcissists like the stream or you're all narcissists you don't think you deserve love <laughs> why I just don't have it number seven the seventh red flag that I saw during these episodes of Love is Blind is that Clay never professed his love. This song, wait, this scene is really, really crazy because the editors, guys, the editors literally went through half of the screen and edited out their reaction. So this is really fucked up. The editors literally would change what AD was reacting to. So we don't even know how much this conversation was real. We don't even know. Let's go. Gun show. Let's go, guys. Liked for the guns, guys. Liked for the guns. Okay. Let's go. Love, devotion, care, or anything to AD. He professed everything opposite of that. I, don't know, I really don't want to let you down. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel that. Like, is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Because it is a date that's coming up. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he knows. That's the problem. They don't want to let other people down, but they also aren't man enough to let them down easy. Thank you, Mikey. All like the stream so Brittany can buy more strawberries. Guys, they're three euro a container. That's a lot. And um, I know how much this means to you and all that stuff. And I want to be that guy. And I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. <laughs> like he's just literally not that guy. Okay. So he keeps telling her that he's scared of marriage based off of his parents. And he continues to say that he struggles. Okay. I'm also going to say this out loud. And please forgive me because I know it's not the case for everybody. But when I was courting my husband, one of the way, one of the reasons I knew it was the right person was also the relationship his parents had with each other. It was the fact that they were still together and they managed a life together. And it's not about perfection. It's about the relationship they're having. And same with my parents. It's not about perfection. It's about the relationship they're having. We don't come from divorced homes. Our parents are still together. And it sort of makes a difference in a child's life. And I know that's really difficult because I'm not saying that you should stay in a marriage just for your kids. I'm just saying regardless of your best intentions, like your kids are still products of those intentions and those actions you take. And so we are watching two children who grew up in broken homes or confusing homes. And I think they're both trying to confirm love in a way that is – um difficult like this is a difficult way to find love right this is a very difficult way to find love and have you guys heard of that phenomenon that if you go to like a school or a camp or if you work somewhere and you're with enough people for enough time you'll just naturally fall in love with whoever is available and I think there's that probably that sensation that happens in the pods where like you're around these people you're having fun feelings are high alcohol is high right? All these things are high. So they, well, you know, they settle because it's available. And then they get out to the real world and realize like, what am I doing? In the pods, yeah, for sure. You want to win. But outside of the pods, you realize like, wait, why am I doing this? You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> Cool says, if you were AD's friend and knew it was likely that he was going to hurt her, what would you do, if anything? Um, I mean, if... Look, you know, ultimately... Um, ultimately, like, AD is smart and she knows better. And I think... I, I probably, okay, when my friends are in toxic relationships, what I say is this. I say, hey, you're an adult and I trust you to make decisions. Can I ask you about your relationship? And they'll say, sure. And I'm like, okay, but this might sound offensive because like I'm a little unsure of what I'm observing. And honestly, for my friends in toxic relationships or what I view as toxic, they are adults. And genuinely, as much as they would want my opinion, they only really want it if I'm validating them. Some people just want to be validated and I don't validate even even the people. I don't care who you are. I'm not validating you. But also, you're an adult and I trust you to make your decisions. 
And that's what I do. When my friends are in bad relationships, in my opinion, it's not up to my opinion to decide what they do with their life. They're adults. But if they need me to validate their relationship, I think that's also a red flag. You should need your best friends or your sisters or your mom or your coworker. Like other people shouldn't be validating your relationship. That feels weird. Right? So I don't know. Personally, I feel like I always tell my adult friends, you're adults and I trust you, but I'm not going to pretend like I'm excited for you either. So I'm not one, I'm not, I'm not one of those friends who can like pretend I'm excited for you. I'm just like, okay. But like, you know, you do you, you're an adult. With marriage, and I'm not understanding why he even came on Love is Blind, but the fact that he continues to say that he has an issue with it mm. and her go-to mm. is that she's willing to help him through it. I'm not understanding why she would want to do that because there is a- Because he's handsome. Miss Fishy says, would you- have been open to someone who came from a divorced home but had worked on themselves and had a functional relationship with their parents? Or was that a deal breaker in its entirety? Oh, no, 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 no. It definitely wasn't a deal breaker in its entirety. I would have been I would have been more than happy to date a very well-adjusted, healthy person who happened to come from a divorced home. It was just one of the th preferences I had just because the category of person who tends to come from a divorced home has a different trajectory than a person who doesn't. So I, I would have been open to dating somebody from a divorced background, but I would have even dated somebody who'd been divorced before. But it's it's just more than likely you'll end up with somebody who's similar to you and that will be more cohesive. So even my partner and I, even though we're very, very, very different in terms of a lot of aspects, in terms of our individuality, we are like we were both unmarried. We've never been married before. We were both very picky about marriage. Marriage is very serious to us. We, you know, we, you know, there were things that were similar enough and values that led us to making similar decisions that I think reflect sort of those things. But ultimately, I would have been open to the right consciousness with the right amount of compatibility, regardless of their story for the most part. Right. But, you know, the middle part, there's the part that you have to go through that you have to help him get through it. So that's you going through heartache, you going through pain you going through him not treating you like you want him to like that's what you have to go through to whenever until whenever okay, you see this scene guys there were moments in the edit where like straight down the middle of the video it was literally two different scenes and the only way we knew is clay's finger ended up on the other side of the screen so they would shoot the show and cut it in a way that ad's reactions weren't even honest reactions to whatever clay was saying because it was two different moments this show is such a little reality TV is so fake, but so real, but so fake. Ever he decides to then be ready. Oh, I love that gift. This is my favorite gift. Girl, but not me. And then they go to the house and then he continues with how not ready he is to be married. And he starts to give excuses, you know, about his father and he went on the infidelity trips and all of that. And then he got the nerve yeah. to say that, you know, looking up to people like Diddy and Will Smith. Ew. Ew, I missed that. Did he say Diddy? And Will Smith? How did I miss that, bro? Yo. <laughs> bro. I've never seen a black relationship that where a man is faithful. And I'm not even blaming my dad. Like, I'm talking about like all black men that's yep, been in my life. Yep. And as the see, that's what I'm saying. You've never known any black man to be faithful in your bubble. What bubble are you in? When men say that, when men come to me and they go, all men cheat. I'm like, ooh, what kind of men are you hanging around, bro? Nah, nah, that's you. That's a you problem. That's a you problem. That is not a black man problem. That is a you and your bubble problem. You know what I mean? When a man comes to me and says like all men cheat, that that is you telling on yourself. That has nothing to do with the men that I'm talking to. Absolutely not. When men say all men do this, that means they're associating themselves with those men. You are telling on your fucking selves. You are telling on your fucking selves. 
All men do this. You are telling on yourself. You think you represent billions of men? You are telling on yourself. And girl, I'm listening, girl. You are telling on your fucking self. Listen to people. They will tell you who they are. Listen to people when they talk. They will tell you who they are. Conversation goes on. He just continues to profess his lack of devotion. And it's clear. So to me, the concept of one girl, yeah. I'm always having a fear of like, can I just be with one person? Mm -hmm. You're not ready to get married. Get the fuck off this show. I mean, right here, he's clearly saying that he's going to say no. Just that marriage part is just, it's, it's like a unknown thing for me. Now, there is a part of me that really wonders if he said all of this in a pod, would AD have said yes to him? Because, I mean, it is true that he did not mention any of these issues until after he got out of the pods. At least <gasps> Look, another alt made another alt account. Oh, oh, I'm so turned on right now, bro. I'm so turned on right now, but you're going to get blocked because like I don't consent to this. I, as a content creator, love, love knowing that somebody is so just telling on themselves that I get to witness it. As a content creator, I feel so enamored by the bubbles, but also we need to block the bubbles. Like this person made another account called alt account just to yell at me about something that's not even true. I want to, I wish we could watch you like an, like an experiment. You're so weird. Oh my God. Don't stalk me. I don't consent. Oh my God. Oh, why are you so obsessed with me? Boy, I want to know why are you so obsessed with me? No, literally though. Don't stalk me. I don't consent. But literally, I don't consent to this. Stop being a consent violator. Obsessed. This is, I, I just, who is this brain? Like, who is this person that is making different accounts just to yell at me over something that's not even real? Mental health is real. Go to therapy, guys. This is the same person that said they were a therapist. They're like, actually, I'm a therapist. And um, what you're doing isn't cool. Um, bro, you're psycho. You're literally psycho. Mods, if you see another alt account, you have permission to ban them. Like, you're being psycho. None of the issues about him being worried about getting married or struggling about being faithful. But then again, I guess better late than never. And like AD said. And like he gives me the option to accept it or reject it. Then reject it. Ooh, mama. Red flag number nine. He does not do things to show you that he is a provider. Now, I'm not just talking about financially, even though that works for me as well. I was a little confused, too, about the money stuff. You know, my mom asked me the other day. I was talking to my mom about my husband and I was like talking about money and, you know, retirement. We we're talking about like when we're 80 years old, what are we going to do? And my mom was like, you guys share money, right? And I was like, yeah, we share everything. She goes, OK, good. And I was like, yeah, we share everything because I've never shared money with anyone. Like, I've never shared money with anyone. So I was like, yeah, I'm married. Like, I'm sharing money with somebody. I know how nervous this conversation must be for the love is blind bubble. Guys, you go on a reality TV show where you know for a fact you're not going to marry these people. And then they're like, well, how's your money situation? Uncomfortable. Some people have joined this show with like literally $20 in their account. Okay, I think I'm exaggerating the number, but it was really low. And I remember thinking like, oh, because you got paid $1,000 a week to be on the show. You know, you know, Mikey says it's because of your huge boobs. They are that they're obsessed. True. Thank you. Well, I'm talking about when there's opportunities. I'm talking about when there's opportunity to be selfless. Yo, 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 yo. And to when there's opportunities. Her sister. Right? This is her sister, his sister, his sister. Either way, AD's sister and Clay's sister, so attractive. But AD's sister, the one at the wedding, I, I fell in love. I told my husband, I was like, move over. I'm in love. I was like, she's so beautiful. 
I don't know who it is, but AD's got a sister. She's got long hair and she's kind of gothy. And she's even this sister. They've, they've, if you put a little bit of goth and I'm like, I'm signing up. Mm. I'm talking about when there's opportunity to be selfless and to provide for you in whatever way you need at that time. He does not take the opportunity. Now, that can also fall into chivalry or being a gentleman like this part right here. So cold. Are you freezing? Freezing. Ooh, yeah. Look. No, 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 no. no. And she likes the cold. cold. Yeah. Clay is a mess. Let me tell you. Sir, you had a sweater on, sir. Sir, sir. He got on that nice, cozy zip up sweater or whatever that is. Haiti says, actually, I'm a therapist and I'm personally bestowing a license to Brittany for being based. <laughs> Thank you. Approved. <laughs> Looked real, real warm. I kind of feel like. Just a reminder if you're new to my audience, I'm not a therapist. We do philosophy stuff. I just use a lot of therapy language because I love therapy. But also, it's like, what are you going to do? It's the internet. We use words wrong. But also, I'm trying my best not to do that. But you know, I read a lot of books. So, like, I get. I get it in my head. I do watch a lot of therapists on YouTube too, but I'm not a therapist channel. I'm not a mental health channel. I'm a philosophy channel. It's just mental health is one of the tenets of being a whole human being. Like AD was looking a little sideways at him. Am I tripping? I kind of feel like she felt what we were feeling when we saw that. Now, I'm not saying- Ooh, is excess debt a deal breaker for true love? Um, So even if you're in love with somebody, I don't think it means you have to be with them. I think when I say soulmate, I mean compatibility in terms of numbers. I know I'm sounding romantic, like we're soulmates, but I am actually talking about probability as well. So if somebody has an excess of debt, like $300,000 and they spent it all on Starbucks coffees. You know what I'm saying? And this is a red flag that has to be a deal breaker. I mean, for me, it would definitely be like, okay, you got maybe once or two more times to not show me that you're a gentleman for I'm like, not here for it. Sometimes my husband who loves the cold will wear his jacket just so he can give it to me later. I'm so in love with this man. <laughs> I'm so in love with him. I wear sweaters and I know I get extra cold. I get cold so much. So I will I will dress what I think is warm enough. And he'll be like, you're not dressing warm enough. I was like, it's warm enough. And he will take his jacket in which I know he does not want to wear because he doesn't even need it. He loves the cold and he will take it just to give it to me later. You know, it really depends on what type of girl you are. But for me, this was definitely a ill. Work is not the problem. Work has never been the problem, ever. So what's the problem? Oh. Red flag number 10. Now, amongst one of the most prevalent ways that Clay has shown he has a bunch of red flags that AD should definitely run from, it's his lack of consideration. Now, he's shown a lack of consideration. Now, hold on, hold on. Sassafras says, damn, I have debt, but I'm trying to fix it. I'm dying alone. No, everybody has debt. Relax. You're not alone. Everybody has debt. I have debt. We all have debt. Debt's just the American way. In many of ways, but one thing that- Also, I, I, I- You know- her hair for the wedding looked really, really good. Her hair for the wedding was really, really nice. That continues to come up is the fact that he does not come home at all. I, in terms of lifestyle, found their setup very complicated, personally. It'll be the first time I've seen him since yesterday, um, early afternoon. Last night I had planned like this super cute DIY thing. To bought him like all these things and I like set it up on the island. Mm -hmm. And it's still sitting there. Now I don't know how much more inconsiderate a person has to be than to not come home, but apparently even this is not enough for AD to run for the hills. 
The person that you're dating showing inconsideration by doing things that they know makes you feel sad or, you know, knowing that you've mentioned plenty of times that you would love for them to come home and then they never do. That means that they're being inconsiderate of your feelings. Um, you ask them to not do this anymore because it does this to you and it's something that's very negative and they continue to do it. That's inconsiderate. Um, there's plenty of things that can be considered inconsiderate. I really feel like this is one of the top and ad had the nerd to still want him red flag number this is the this was the conversation that i expected ad to move away you know i didn't understand their setup can anyone does anyone have any insight on this like did it can anyone give me insight what was the job situation he was like doing airbnbs and had to sleep to get them ready I guess I'm a little confused about that as well. Like, look, I personally, and you guys know this, I wouldn't date somebody whose job, you know what I mean? I wouldn't date somebody whose job had a lifestyle and which wasn't compatible with mine. So I know a lot of people, it's not black and white either. There are some exceptions, obviously, like really, really exceptional jobs. But generally, I want to pick someone with a similar lifestyle. So I was a little confused on his job. I understand it as a single person, how convenient it would be to go to Airbnbs and B&Bs and sleep at them and not come home to someone. But if you're getting married to somebody, like how much longer could you keep that up? Right? Like I, I, I get so confused about that. Like, but he wasn't, he was going to, he wasn't going to marry her anyway, guys. Let's be real. Trevi says, Britt, do you have a, have you done a podcast on people pleasing? You know, I don't think I have. Um, I'm not much of a people pleaser, so it's a little bit difficult, but let me reach out to somebody for a collab and see if they want to talk about it. Cause I think that conversation would be better if somebody who identifies as a people pleaser could come on the podcast and talk about it. You know what I mean? Uh, Seth says that's why the military people get divorced so much. It's true. Even me, I dated a very nice man. So nice. He was so sweet and he was in the military. And as we were dating, I realized like, oh, I can't date the military. Like I thought I'd be a great military wife. But when he said he'd be away like eight months out of the year on a ship, I was like, oh, I'm going to feel like a single parent. Like that's going to feel crazy to me. Um, He was so sweet though, like very nice gentleman. But yeah, that was like, my brain would be like, nope, nope. That was like one of the youngest people I've ever dated. The age gap was also too much. It was too much. It was too much. But he was so sweet. I really liked him. So you're ready for marriage and you meet him and he says that he is absolutely not ready for marriage. Please do not think that you can change him at all. That seems to be a running thing. A guy tells you he's not ready for a relationship or he's not ready to be married. And for some reason, you think you have the P from from heavens above. You think your stuff is good. Man, Ashley's killing it, bro. True. I can change him. He'll do it for me. I'm the one. I'll. Ch you know how many of my girlfriends have been like, oh my God, he's never wanted to get married, but he wants to marry me. And I'm like, Mm-hmm. Yep. And do you want to ask me if those girls are married? No, they're not. Spoiler. Go. Okay. No, it's not going to do it. Like my, like I told you, my dad cheated year seven into the marriage. I just feel like it affected my mom. So it's like I got that on my mind of like, damn, I don't want to be in a situation where I'm ever going to cheat. Now what now? Now, how are you going to hope you ain't going to... Values, bro. Values. He's weak. When in front of temptation, what do you do? What am my dad? What does my dad call cheaters? Rats. Rats in the chat, guys. Rats. My dad would say, Betty, Betty, Betty. The only men that cheat are rats. Men who cheat are rats. Don't do nothing that you have 100% control of doing or not doing. There's a lot of things that way I think that I don't think is mature enough for a marriage. And oh, damn. Therapist is back. Yo, I'm being stalked, bro. YouTube, I'm being stalked. This is stalking at this point, bro. This is, this is stalking at this point. I asked, you know, I manifested this. I told my husband, I wonder when my next stalker will show up. That's the worst part of online. Here it goes. It happened. I said to him this morning. I said, I wonder when I'm going to get a stalker again because that shit fucking scares me, but it's a part of the job. Here we go. 
Stalker number two. I bet it's a man this time. Before it was a woman. Damn. You know? I see fire. I see your message, bro, but I'm not going to derail the whole show right now to talk about it. Something else. Sorry. Um, you know, and Clay has basically said here he is not ready for marriage. He doesn't even feel like he's a leader. And, um, I love the transparency, but he wasn't man enough to break up with her. I love that she's willing to listen to him. I wish she was willing to walk away. Why do we think he's a safe space again? He gives me the option to accept it or reject it. OK, girl, I guess. All right, y'all, we finally made it. Luck the way, the way my heart felt when I saw this, the way my heart felt. Also, what, who did her lashes? Who did this woman's lashes? What? Ma'am, they're falling off. Like, ma'am? Key number 12. I know fully I'm not ready for marriage. And you deserve the best. See how he always has a speech? Red flag. People who always have speeches. He is rehearsed. Clay is a rehearsed man. And that's that's the speech thing I don't like. I, number 13, red flag. The speeches. He's always, he's always ready with a speech. And they, it, the speeches sound good, but it's always just a speech. And that's why it feels like a lie. It's, he says the right things without the right energy. And if I'm not ready to give that 100%, I won't go there with you when I'm not ready. He just flat out tells you he is not ready. He flat out tells you, no, it's not going to work. You want marriage? No. You want a relationship? No. Now, people have been saying that AD and Clay may be still together. Listen, we'll have to wait for the reunion tomorrow to verify that. But I will say this video is not to down AD at all. I really felt like this was a great opportunity to point out the red flags that everybody goes through that people seem to miss. I mean, it was red flag one on one with AD and Clay. So I felt like it would be a super dope opportunity to actually give some examples of some common red flags that people often miss. Now, if you notice some other red flags that you thought I've missed that you want to put down in the comments below to make sure the girls and boys look out for it, make sure you do that. Also, please like, comment, and subscribe in this video, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye bye. We won't okay. talk about oh. that anymore. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, the parents was such an interesting scene. So that was Ashley Kelzar. Really good video. I'll go ahead and put it in the chat again. You guys can check her out. She's a small YouTuber, so give her some love. I thought that was really, really good. Okay. Now, okay, I want to show you, again, going back to Clay being a yapper. This is from Netflix. It's a two-minute clip. Hopefully, they don't take down the stream while I'm watching it. I don't think they will. But check this out. <clears throat> Listen to how Clay talks. He just talks and talks and talks. Man, when I watched this live or, you know, originally, I was like, oh, my God, he doesn't shut up. I'm telling you. I am not a therapist. Disclaimer. OK, but from the books I've read and from my understanding of a pathology, whether it's narcissism or not, and I'm not saying NPD. I'm just saying high on narcissism. The way this man monologues is so rehearsed, which at most is just fake. He's a fake ass bitch. Okay. Listen to this fake ass bitch and the way he talks and talks and talks and talks. It sounds so good, but it's talk, 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 talk. Okay. I don't know what it is, but it's something pathological. Listen to this. Looking back, would you have done things differently? It's a yes or no, Clay. It's a yes or no. Listen to the way this man about to talk. You know, uh, Nick, that's a good question. I think throughout this whole... Uh, you know, uh, Judge, that is a good question, but my client would like to say something else. Like, it's like, he, the way he talks to... Uh, you know, that's a great question, Nick. It's like... Mm. Process, one of the biggest things that I struggled with was getting out of my own way. I kind of battle with, like, the morality of, like, am I a good person, am I a bad person? Mm -hmm. And AD always, like, navigated me. She always made sure that she uplifted me and made me feel like the best person, but I couldn't get out of my own way. I just kept... Thank we need to roll our eyes more. Look at myself in the mirror. I'm like, I'm not the guy that deserves like love and marriage. And, you know, AD really seen me through. She's, she's honestly the love of my life. And I will tell you, honestly, I did make a mistake. 
you know, going to the altar and saying no. But uh shut up, Brittany. Brittany, do not make that face. He is if Clay was the love of his life, he would have married her. The love of your life doesn't choose their ego over you. The love of your life picks you and it's healthy and it's beautiful. This is not the love of her life. Jesus. Uh, you know, it's like one of the things that you just kind of like go through and live through, you know, and um, I'm humbled to watch myself and see that there was different things that I didn't do well. And, you know, I'm definitely taking the work. I've been doing therapy to be a better person, you know, uh, because I morals though aren't therapy see how he said he fights with the morality if he's a good person or bad person so that could stem from a mental health crisis in childhood so that's something else but I would say what is your personal values my bro what are your morals when temptation comes at you what's your code of honor when a woman comes at you and says clay I'm into you what is your code of honor when Sarah Ann slides into your dms Jeremy, what's your code of honor okay What's your code of honor? And right now, Clay doesn't have one. But he talks pretty and he looks pretty and he dresses pretty. But he doesn't have one. So, you know, again, mental health is great. But what about your, this is a philosophy crisis as well. Am I a good person or a bad person? Well, what are your morals? I do think that, you know, it was a big letdown and I apologize. I love you. You are the love of my life. And it was a This is fucked up. For him to say you're the love of my life is so, nar like, it's so about him. It's so about him. You are the love of, you're not the, she's not the love, she might be the love of your life, but you're not the love of hers. How about that? Like, there ain't no way. There ain't no way. Edie, that was like a, a roller coaster of emotions. I'm watching you go from like, oh, here Ooh. we go to, oh. AD, do not fall for this man. Oh my goodness. Yeah. What are you feeling hearing Clay say all of these things? It just takes me right back to day one of falling for him and knowing that I could be everything that he needed and knowing that like there's nothing more that I could have done and then to hear him say it was a mistake is like. It doesn't matter. It wasn't a mistake. It was the right decision. See, he's still too pussy. He was too pussy to break up with her before the wedding. He was too pussy to let her go now. So he's gonna bother her, connect with her, talk to her, and then when she comes back to him, he's going to cheat on her or he's going to abandon her again because he doesn't want AD. He doesn't want to be rejected by AD and he doesn't want to be rejected by the world. And the world is rejecting him after he rejected AD. And so now he wants her back for his own self-esteem, his own reassurance. And then when he gets her back, he's just going to abandon her again because he doesn't want her. The love of your life will not do this to you, in my opinion. Okay? In my opinion, in Brittany's opinion, when it comes to love, I think the right person for you and them, symbiotic relationship, I think when you're in the right relationship and it's healthy, I don't think you put each other through things like this. I just don't think you do. I think this is what people think is love. I think this is what people think is a relationship that's healthy and it's not. You know? I hate it. What am I supposed to do with that information? Yeah, what is she supposed to do with it, Clay? Keep it to your fucking self. You already said no to this woman. You don't get, and she said that. AD said that. She goes, if you don't say yes to me at the wedding, it's we're never dating after this. And he goes, well, why can't we date after this? And that's the problem. He wants his cake and he wants to eat it too. He wants AD's commitment, but he doesn't want to make the commitment to AD. And I, I, I agreed with her. If he didn't marry her at the wedding, they shouldn't date after. And you know what other couple did that? What other couple, do you guys remember? He rejected her at the wedding, continued to date her after, and then cheated on her with multiple women. SK and Raven. SK and Raven. SK made this whole fucking big deal, made Raven get a wedding dress that wasn't even her first choice, but was in respect to his culture, made Raven jump through fucking hoops to be his wife. Then they got them to the altar and SK was like, this isn't the right time, Raven. And then continued to date Raven and then cheated on her. And SK, fun fact, did come from a polygamous background no judgment, but 
You know what I'm saying? Look, I'm pro poly. I'm pro like open relationships, whatever. Just do it ethically. But you know what I'm saying? These men have the audacity to say no to these women on the altar. And then hello. Didn't Bartiz do that? No. Well, Bartiz said no. To, no, they didn't. Did they date after the? Did they date after? I don't know if they dated after. I don't think so. I don't. Did Bartiz and Nancy date after? Either way, that was obviously a bad match. Oh my God, Nancy was so silly for thinking Bartiz was ever the love of her life. Bartiz is a child. He picks his nose and eats his burgers. Like, why would Nancy ever think Bartiz was her partner? Mm -hmm. Do you think you would ever date him again? AD. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> That's not even funny. That's not even funny. That's not even funny. I hated that moment. I hate, I hate it. <laughs> Why would you do that to yourself? Why would you literally keep dating this man? Okay, let's watch this video. This video is about the reunion. I'm so upset. I'm so upset at AD. I'm so mad at her, but not really. I'm just like, ugh, when women repeat cycles of toxicity, I'm like, come on, ladies. And same with men. I just want so much better for you guys as like a mom, but also I'm not your mom, so I get it. I just don't get it. Why would she even think, contemplate, be open? He rejected you at the altar. You think this is the love of your life? You think this is the love of your life? You think the love of your life is going to cheat on you? You think the love of your life is going to hit you? You think the love of your life is going to abuse you? You think the love of your life is going to mentally torture you until you feel like a ball of shit and then blame you for your actions? All right. This is a Bachelor fan take. This is a reunion uh, summary. I thought we could watch this little short video. Let's check this out together. Get out your popcorn, EpiPens, and golden wine gum. Yo, I wish I had some popcorn. Also, oh my god, shout out to previous couples. I was so excited to see them. Publits, the Love is Blind season 6 reunion is here, and it was spicy. I should have been on the front porch. Wait. Okay, can I say something about Kwame? Because I really hope Kwame is happy in his relationship. Because I really like them as a couple. But Kwame always looks... Like he's unsure of why he's where he is. And I think he just has anxiety, but I'm actually super rooting for him. And Chelsea, right? Kwame and Chelsea. I'm super rooting for them, if I'm going to be honest. Now, Chelsea in pink, this Chelsea, right? The season's Chelsea. She will be picking next season's contestants along with other people. So kind of exciting. Waiting for your ass at 6 a.m. is what I should have been okay. doing. Okay. never taken accountability. <gasps> Aurora, good point. AD even met with Matthew for a date or two. Oh, you're so right. Ew. God, AD has such bad judgment. I love her. Um, Kyle, good point. I can never read Kwame's emotions. Me neither. I can never tell. Is Kwame comfortable or not? But I love him. You know what I mean? Like, is he comfortable? But I'm, I'm never sure. <gasps> Laura, did we love her? I'm not going to lie. We loved her. My husband and I loved her. When she told Jeremy, Jeremy, his name is so stupid. When she told Jeremy like to kick rocks with an open toed shoe, I was like, mommy, she's so mommy. I can't. Jeremy's such a little snake. He's such a little rat, Jeremy. I want to bully him. I want to bully him so badly. Ugh. You weak. Never He's so weak. I love Kwame. You're a clown. Okay. Saying that I'm a pick me girl. You're I have, this is, she might be the trashiest contestant on Love is Blind ever to happen. Sarah Ann. Look at her now during the reunion. She's so trashy. And only Jeremy, a rat like Jeremy, a pussy, weak-ass person like Jeremy could have ended up with a toxic bitch like this. She's so toxic. She's so just not classy, bro. She's she's just got this, like, energy about her that's so ugly, bro. And then she slid into Jeremy's DMs when she shouldn't have. Shame. 
You're the pick me girl. Right, you're, the pick, you're the pick me. You're the pick me. You're the pick me. Listen to these Gen Z girls fighting. You're the pick me. Forge waiting for your ass at 6 a.m. is what I should have been okay. doing. You've never taken accountability. You've never, you're a clown, okay? Saying that I'm a pick me girl, you're the pick me girl. Right, you're the pick me. Let's you're the pick me girl. I hate Jessica. I hate Jess. She's fucking high maintenance and she's a pick me too. I hate them. Actually, you saw me crying with my heart, heart, heart broken. I'll have my moment. You saw you me have crying your with my heart and broken. You and let me tell you, the love is blind. The way Kwame hides behind Chelsea, cute. Blind people were taking notes. They have learned their lessons from the less than stellar reunions of the past. They have been listening, and this time around, they do Wait, Freya, I... You said Laura was really rude, Jeremy sucked, but Laura was a hypocrite. She told Jessica to get between Jimmy and Chelsea, then get mad at Sarah. I don't think so. I think Laura seemed really uncomfortable in my opinion. I thought Laura, when Jessica was like making inappropriate comments about Jimmy, I thought Laura looked really uncomfortable but didn't know what to do about it, in my opinion. Did you guys think Laura was like supporting her? Did she like, oh, I don't know. She seemed really uncomfortable but didn't know how to say something. Maybe I misread the situation, but it felt like, it felt like when Chelsea was, I mean, I mean, sorry, when Jessica was like, oh, I'm going to go for Jimmy, which was gross, by the way. Jessica's obsession with Jimmy was gross. I did not like Jess, Jess the whole time. But when when she was making that conversation with Laura, I don't know. It felt like Laura was really uncomfortable and didn't know what to, like, versus AD, definitely, you know. You're right, Kyle. You're right. Laura definitely does have her faults, so I agree with you. I agree with you. Discord says, Brett and Tiffany are my favorite. Brett and Tiffany are so sweet. They're so sweet. I mean, it Cam and Lauren and Chelsea and Kwame and, you know, it's just so many, so many cute couples have come out of Love is Blind, actually. I love it. Delivered. Well, for the most part, I do have a few gr- Yo, that looks so much like Megan Fox. Fuck all of you who said it didn't. Look at that. That looks like Megan fucking Fox. Look at that. Types. So at this reunion special, the pod gang from season 6 is meeting up approximately a year after the show actually filmed, while also featuring special guest spots from some of the franchise's <gasps> success stories. Isn't Gigi so cute? I just think she's so adorable. I love the aesthetic of her and her new husband. He seems so sweet. And I love Alexa and Brennan. That's it plus these two and to no one's surprise jo the anime couple i call them the anime couple because they both watch anime Johnny and amy are still together matthew is nowhere to be found and jeremy is wearing a hawaiian shirt oh and speaking of jeremy i am seeing someone funny you should mention that she actually is here today i feel like jeremy and sarah ann deserve each other but also only ended up with each other to prove that they weren't skanks hoes and rats which they did not prove during this reunion. Let's please welcome Sarah Ann to the show. <laughs> I love him. I'm so attracted. To, I love him. Oh, not the kiss. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, as for Laura, well, she had to work, so they zoomed her in from Spain, much to Jeremy's dismay. And you knew this was going to be a different reunion where production actually listened to what people wanted to hear when Jeremy gets hit with this right out of the gate. Yet there's a third woman whose mother went on social media and said that you two were actually engaged mm -hmm. while you were applying for this experiment. So what do you have to say? Jeremy a hoe. And his, Jeremy a hoe. I loved his mom though when Jeremy was like, um, can you believe Laura was mad that I came home at 5 a.m. after being with Sarah Ann? And his mom's like, um, you're lucky it wasn't me. Hey, it's not true. I was previously engaged. Everybody I dated was well aware of that. Now this is something that Laura actually backs him up on. Because while Jeremy says he was engaged, he also says he wasn't engaged when he went on the show. And both Laura and Sarah Ann... How y'all get engaged so much not married? How y'all get engaged the... ...say that Jeremy told them that when they were in the pods. However that... Yeah, Jeremy has beady eyes because he's a rat is not what Laura's still upset about, as the conversation then steers to Jeremy's location sharing 5 a.m. night out. Had I not woken up, he never would have admitted talking to her or going to her house in any way, shape, or form. Sarah Ann was actually telling other people 
the exact same lie, so they had corroborated on that. Well, this then devolves into a screaming match. Sarah Ann is so, they're so trashy. I'm sorry. They're like the trashiest couple who's ever been on this show. And season one had some trash. But these two together, oh my God, look at them. It's like Tweedle Dumb and Tweedle Idiot. It's like Tweedle Thumb and Tweedle Ho. Oh, they're just so gross. Oh, they're like the leftovers at a buffet that nobody wanted. They're like the eggs at the buffet that have been on the heater too long. You know what I mean? Oh, gross. Match where Laura and Sarah Ann call each other pick me girls, which is kind of wild considering one of them walked into the reunion looking like this. I can't feel my face. He had told her that night when they stayed out together that he was going to break up with me. So he spent all day with my family, all day telling me how much he loved me. Kid Why are y'all shaking your heads? We literally have the receipts on this one. What did he tell you? He told See, oh, when AD went for her, girl, when AD went for her, I was like, get her, AD, get her. Me that he's breaking everything off, and I was like, okay. And basically, Laura doubts the whole thing, saying, you're telling me that you were all in on me, and then suddenly <gasps> you- Shannon says, Laura was so controlling and horrible to Jeremy. I do sympathize with him in that way, but he acted shady. I disagree. I think Laura is a very successful woman who also has her own insecurities, but I think she knew Jeremy was wrong. I also didn't like the way she told Jess just to leave without any kind of information, which obviously the show was cut that way. I don't think I didn't get very many bad vibes from Laura. I just got she's a very specific category of woman like. She's a very specific category of very like in control of her life kind of woman. So in Laura's defense, like she's not a regular girl. She's actually quite exceptional in the woman category because not very many women are like Laura's, but she's not perfect. She definitely has her flaws and she definitely was bitchy and she definitely was gossipy at certain points, which I mean, and she wasn't perfect. I remember a scene. Oh, what was the scene I saw with her? And I was like, oh, I don't like Laura, but I do like Laura. I think she just had some problems that she could definitely work on in therapy and philosophy stuff. Obviously, we always need philosophy. Um, what did Lara do that made me upset? I can't remember what it was, but I'm not completely mad at her. What was it? Oh, I can't remember. Yeah, I just didn't like the way she told Jess to leave and trust her. I obviously don't. I th obviously think she told Jess the details, right? What was it? Shannon says, girl, she was telling him how to dress and constantly talking down to him. Yeah, because he was scummy. Would you accept that behavior from a man? Yes, but no. The only reason it looked like she was talking down to him was because he wasn't on her level. Nuh-uh. If the genders were reversed, people would be pissed. No, girl. That's your bubble talking, girl. That's your bubble talking. Oh, the bean dip thing. I actually didn't care that she said that as a joke, but I, I, I think it's different what you say in private. No, Shannon, I think your bubble's talking, girl. Because, like, in my world, if you're telling your partner to dress better, that's a good thing. But the way she was talking down to him was only because they weren't compatible. You know, she didn't respect him. She didn't value him. They should have just broken up. But the thing is, is when you date a woman like Laura, Laura has to understand, like, Laura's the category of woman that gets told she's too picky, but she's allowed to be picky and she should be picky. You know what I mean? So I agree with you that it's signs of a toxic relationship, but I don't think she's bad for doing it. I think she's bad for not breaking up. You know what? She's bad for not breaking up with Jeremy because she's she's very self-focused. You know what I mean? She's very like, she knows what she's, she's in Spain for work. She didn't even skip work to be on TV. Lots of people would have skipped work to be on TV, but Laura's like, I'm not skipping work to be on TV. I'll be on TV if it's convenient about work. Do you know what I'm saying? She's a very specific category of person. So in that way, I didn't mind that she did that to Jeremy, but also like they should have just broken up. They weren't compatible. Maybe it's because I respect Laura the more than I respect Jeremy too. But ultimately, like, I wouldn't talk to my partner that way because we're in a healthy relationship. You know? Kyle says, I mean, let's remember that in the beginning she called him a kid. If you take that at face value, she never respected him. True. Very true. Don't be with people you don't respect, but this show is all about settling. Love is Blind is mostly about couples who settle. And then with the exception of ones that are obviously very compatible. I think Zach and Bliss are, like, stupidly compatible. I really do. You know what I mean? 
Um, so yeah, Laura definitely has a lot to work on for sure. I think I just respect her more as a person than Jeremy. So it's probably my bias. So, okay. Good for calling me out. That's probably my bias. Um, so I agree with that. Yeah. Obviously I think she needs to work on some stuff, right? She's not perfectly healthy. You went out to a bar with Sarah Ann and had a conversation so good you decided to end our relationship then and there. Mm -hmm. At which point they then show this never before seen footage of Sarah Ann and Laura at the barbecue where, as Laura says, it's almost weirdly like Sarah Ann was asking for advice about her new relationship with her man. Like you think he's like an all talk and then like 100%. once you're in the situation. 100%. Really? I don't believe a single word that he says. But see how Sarah Ann's being like, totally two-faced right here I and mean, to be fair this whole show is kind of two-faced but like sarah ann is like getting dirt on lara because she ended up with jeremy i think he was a literal f***ing clown robot in the pods and honestly i don't think there was a yeah lara's mean bro but i like blunt mean people that's i do have a preference for those people because even if they're horrible people at least they're not lying to my face like sarah ann's kind of lying to lara's face right now person on that stage that was with these two as new beef starts to emerge with pretty much everyone like here with jeremy and jimmy when laura says the guy likes attention since he that night happened last saturday all he's been talking about is his image and how he looks worse than jimmy well it's because and here's my theory i bet jeremy was a nerd kid who was unattractive his whole life and never had sex or never felt attractive to women got buff later in life and got a haircut and kind of dressed okay and kind of became more attractive than he's ever been. And so he compares himself. He's insecure. He ends up with women like Laura because he's like, he kind of needs like a top or a mommy. You know what I mean? Because he's a little bottom bitch, but like in a bad way. And she's like a toxic top mommy. So they need to work on that. But like, I think Jeremy, and I don't know this to be true, but I think he probably was a nerd his whole life growing up. Because every part of me wants to beat him up for being weak and spineless. And I'm assuming he only looks somewhat put together because he kind of learned how to dress himself. Because if you're comparing yourself to Jimmy, you know what I'm saying? So I don't know why. Also, notice that nobody is mad or toxic with the anime couple. The only couple that got to the, the, the altar and was like the good couple, notice they have beef with nobody. Because they constantly would separate themselves. They constantly would pick each other. They constantly would like leave the drama to hang out with one another. They were literally the healthiest best couple on the show. And they literally just like walked away from like the drama. So just like keep that in mind too. Why the f*** he came on the show? To which Jimmy is like... Oh. Oh. Now Jimmy then recalls what this was probably about as... Whoa. Didn't Jeremy's ex-girlfriend accuse him of pulling a gun on her? What? I never heard that. That's crazy. I'll Google. When he was in the pods trying to make his decision between Chelsea and Jess, all the other guys were trying to pick him up while Jeremy was saying stuff like... At least I can sleep tonight knowing Jimmy's the villain. When I had a decision okay. to make... I don't recall saying that, but if I did say that, I was... Clearly it was on your mind. You're still talking about me and your own relationships and stuff. That's how you viewed me. And pretty much this whole cast has their pitchforks out for the jet ski king and queen, as the two have been completely ostracized from the rest of the group. How does your relationship with them stand today? Mm. Um, I don't talk to any of the women. That's because she liked to unfollow us and still follow our fiancés at the lake day, which I thought was strange. Oh. <laughs> Drama. Hold on, before we get into this, I would love to. Love is blind, Jeremy. 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 Accused of domestic violence. Here's his partner. Hold on. Let me go pull it up for y'all. Her house. I stayed. Okay, hold on. The night. I end up going home the next morning. We sit down. We talk things out. We figure out that, you know, maybe we start over. His girlfriends aren't that cute. I said what I said. He's a nerd. He's a nerd. He's not dating tens. He's dating normies. And he's Somewhere one of them. New. Maybe we leave Florida. We start looking She's very at pretty. places, talk about Tennessee, North Carolina, um, and he starts looking at jobs. Now, I I was skeptical because I never really wanted to leave Florida. This is like part three of the story. Apparently, he responded back and denied it, that he pulled a gun on her, and they went back and forth. I don't know about this. I never heard about this. All I know is this. Jeremy cannot be trusted. That's all I know. But you know, Sarah. Wait, hold on. 
he ostracized from the rest of the group. How does your relationship with them stand today? Hmm. Um, I don't talk to any of the women. If I ever heard a red flag, her name was Sarah Ann. She's a red flag, and that's... That's all I got. That's literally what a red flag is that. I don't talk to any of the women. None of them, girl. That's a pick me. That's a pick me. That sucks. But you know what? They deserve each other. A rat and a pick me. What a perfect couple. The red. I need a tune. Hold on. Her name is Sarah Ann. She needs to be fucking fanned. She hates women and chooses men, but never therapy. If it was up to me. Hmm. Something. She lets Jeremy pee on her. Something. Or Jeremy lets her pee on him. Something. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll get it down. I'll record it. Put it on Spotify. <laughs> That's because she liked to unfollow us and still follow our fiancés at the lake day, which I thought was strange. But you know, Sarah Ann is not here to make friends, so she's going to throw down with each and every one of these ladies. Let's go. You saw me crying after he broke up with me, and I said, I feel gaslighted, and I was heartbroken when I left, and you watched me bawl my eyes out, and you defended him. You were never a girl's girl. He Ever, honey. I Being the loud. I will say, like, look, a girl's girl is obvious. AD's a girl's girl. That's pretty obvious. I would say, like, being a girl's girl is not that hard. It's just saying, like, don't throw women under the bus to get a man's attention, bitch. That's all it is. Like, just don't throw women under the bus for the sake of a man's attention. That's it. Okay? You guys are haters, bro. How dare you think my song was garbage? You're all fired. But, like, you know what I mean? What do you guys – what are you, Simon Cowell? <laughs> I just think that ultimately Sarah Ann made her bed and now she can lay in it and it's a water bed. Okay. Oh, she does not make you the most no notice. It doesn't matter. I'm not trying to be loud. It's not about Jess did take accountability for how she talked really slimy about Jimmy and stuff. And I like Jess more after the reunion than before the reunion. But some people have a theory that Jess is a plant because she got chosen to go and do more like another reality TV show, which I think is interesting. Always loud. Y'all, she won't quit. It's like every time she finishes a fight with one woman, she turns to the next to like, I didn't hear no bell. Just curious if any of you have seen Jeremy in the subsequent time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Every time I see him, they're broken up. <laughs> oh. That was my favorite part of the reunion. I'm so sorry. That was my favorite part of the reunion. That is my favorite. I'm sorry. I was just as loud when I first saw it. I'm so sorry. That is my favorite part of this whole reunion. Girl, the way Chelsea just... Mwah, listen to this. I'm just curious if any of you have seen Jeremy in the subsequent time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh. Every time I see him, they're broken up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see them, they're broken up. Off again, on again, toxic relationships. It was hard, but we made it through. Through all the toxicity, through all the bad. Our love is so strong. We made it through. Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. That's what I'm saying, girls. If your love story, if your Instagram post about your love story is like, through all the domestic violence, through all the lying, cheating, bank fraud, through all the whatever, 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 we made it through. Look how amazing our love is. Girl. A girl. You said it broke it. <laughs> no, these updates. I can barely catch my breath, but they don't it. stop coming. My little heart can barely take it no more. But oh, we've only just begun. As once Jeremy admits that the night with Sarah Ann was wrong and should not have happened the way it did, and also apologizes for bringing the term bean dip into our lives. Yeah, bean dip was weird, but also I know what that is. Like where you flick someone's nipple. I mean, it's kind of like it's kind of neutral. I don't know what it means in every context, but isn't it just kind of like flick their nipple? I don't know. When boys do it to each other, it's kind of funny, but girls can do it to each other and it's kind of safe. But usually when it's boy and a girl or girl or a boy doing it, then it's a little inappropriate sometimes. But unless you have a friend group that doesn't care about gender. The problem is like these are a bunch of straight people ish in like a situation where it'd be more inappropriate but like in a friend group that doesn't care about gender flipping like flicking each other's nipples 
is less sexual and more funny because it hurts. You know, if you guys don't know the bean dip reference, apparently Laura told Jeremy to bean dip KD. AD, not KD. What am I doing? AD, which is like you flick the nipple. But some people like thought it was really offensive or inappropriate. And I, I guess so. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but I'm not in this bubble. Like I, I'm not in this bubble where that is like super, super inappropriate. So I'm like, OK, I have to respect that for some people it's like super inappropriate. You know what I mean? They then announced that Trevor's here to address. I want queer love is blind. Shannon, did you see the season they have? Oh, no, they have ultimatum. I take that back. They have queer ultimatum. They need to do queer love is blind. I would be so ready for that. Mm hmm. His controversy concerning the secret woman. He oh, wait, bean dip not to be confused with flipping the bean. No way, Alex. That's funny. OK, never mind. He was dating the whole time he was on the show. And well, they then. This fucking Trevor tricked me, bro. I was totally tricked by Trevor. I really believed this stupid mullet face. I believed him. So toxic. That's what I'm saying. What level? This is my new my new question. What level of toxicity do you have to be at to go on Love is Blind? Bust this man out like he's taking a Game of Thrones Walk of Atonement. Shame. 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 I loved how much Nick oop, hated him. Nick hated this man. I can't believe Trevor did that, bro. I can't believe Trevor got us like that, bro. He really got us. Shame. Oh, and production? Well, they come with the receipts, as they literally have this- If one of you gets picked for Love is Blind, I would die. I don't know where you apply, though. I forget how it works. Like, I forget. I know a lot of them pick you. Like, they look at your social media presence. They obviously want to build social media people out of the show. Because everyone who ends up going on the show does become, like, a social media person. And then some make it and some don't. Woman's the original couple, Lauren and Cam, they're worth like $3 million now. Next. Show the receipts. I love you so much, honey. I'm excited for it, but more excited to get back to you after and start our life together. She responded with, did you land? Trevor responded, just did. Oh, they look at his face. Look at his little slappable face. Ooh, ooh, I'll slap him. I can't believe him. Look at his stupid little guilty face, this toxic bitch. They got this man stunned. All he can do is look down and pray that the floor will somehow give him guidance. Trevor then says, can I call you in 30 minutes? She said, I missed you so much. Trevor wrote, I love you more than anything in this world, and I'm going to marry you. I hope you know how much I love you and had to pretend that this wasn't real life. To Trevor looks like Hassan when Hassan was doing bro code. <laughs> say anything I said. So they then give Trevor the opportunity to respond and the whole time. Look at his little guilty face. He's just like. Nah, say it with your chest. <laughs> Don't get quiet now. Baby. He got, I couldn't tell if he really like got stunted like with all the pressure. He must have felt a lot of the pressure. But to be fair, like he got bullied. He got full on bullied during this reunion. Yeah. I I had a whole thing planned to say. Stop it. Trevi says, imagine watching Love is Blind and someone breaks the fourth wall and says, hey, Brittany, if you did that, I would die. I would literally die. Oh, my God. That'd be so fun. If you get on Love is Blind, just say bubbles so much that you become the bubble person. Just literally, that's how I'll know. Because they would probably cut that out. But if you literally get on the show and you just say bubbles and then you become the bubble person, I'll know it's you. I'll know it's you. Say. I don't know. So eventually Trevor comes out like. The thing is. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. And that clearly shows when finally he mutters out. I was not dating her dating her technically like i never said will you be my girlfriend before men ain't shit bro men ain't shit bro look at they're so mad at him all of them are so mad at him <laughs> i wasn't even like, dating her bro bro you're married bro i wasn't even like dating her though the show started which had me like oh because <laughs> oh. i mean trevor i can read i just read those texts five seconds oh, ago my God, guy no. this woman wasn't your girlfriend but you love her and apparently also said you're going to marry her you trying to hey, go for in his defense 
Maybe they weren't boyfriend and girlfriend. Love is blind to married at first sight all in one day or something? Her and I were so f toxic. So toxic that after you got out of the pods, you that, said, I'm going I to marry would, you? No, that, I, yes, yes. I'm, I'm toxic as well. I, I admit that. Like, can I, like. I mean, props for admitting you're toxic, but come on. Now, please stop getting mad every time I say people are toxic. It is what it is. That's what I'm saying. They're not evil people. They're just toxic as fuck. You know what I mean? Like, they're not evil. They're just toxic as fuck. And that's what I'm saying. Stop getting mad at me for calling people toxic. Hello? Like, just leave right now. So after some discussion on how him doing this takes away from those trying to actually be real on the show, which... <laughs> They let Trevor pull a Matthew Bro. and just get up and leave. At which point, they turn to AD and Clay. P.S. Chelsea's hair is so nice. Like, the color is so good. It looks so nice. Whoever did, I saw the Chelsea TikTok of her getting ready for the show. She looks so good. And here is something I wish they dug deeper on. Because they do go over a lot here in this segment. Okay, Discord is saying Trevor looks like Hassan Piker. But Hassan, we agree, is much more attractive. I'll take a Middle Eastern frat boy any day. That's a joke. But in terms of aesthetic, I prefer my <laughs> my Middle Eastern men. Like how they did get in contact a few weeks after the show, how Clay has been working on himself in therapy, and how he feels like... Yeah, well, tell Clay to stop skipping leg day, because I see these little turkey legs right here. Like he didn't do enough work to understand himself and to understand love before going on the show, and that was a big downfall. Look at the way Chelsea... I mean, Kate... AD is just zoning, bro. AD zoned. She doesn't make as much eye contact with Clay. She definitely, like, turns away from him when he's talking. It's very interesting. Her body language is so defensive, as it should be, because he's trying to slime back into you, girl. For him. But when he says stuff like... She's, she's honestly the love of my life, and I will tell you, honestly, I did make a mistake. I apologize. I love you. You are the love of my life, and it was a mistake. I want to know if these two are still... T Don't date a brokey. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't date a man who won't put a ring on it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Together. Like, is there hope here? Is this going to be anything? But they play it coy. Do you think you would ever date him again? Next question. Clay, <laughs> would you ever date her again? Thousand percent. Clay also says he sort of, kind of, but actually not really got that apology from his dad that his mom talked about after their wedding. That's because his dad is a narcissist. His dad is so into himself. Clay is now into himself. They're all into themselves. It's all about them. Clay's dad literally makes everything about him. Clay makes everything about him. It is what it is. Mental illness is real, bro. Philosophy issues are real, bro. Me and my dad have a great relationship in terms of our banter. It hasn't been like a, I'm sorry, but in his way, it has been. And I feel comfortable with his answer and who he is as a man. Oh, and and they also touch on Brett from season four here because his relationship with Tiffany was the one Clay was- You wish you could be Brett and Tiffany. You wish you could be Brett. Was talking about- Do you remember Brett's brother and father? He, come from, he comes from a complicated background as well, but I loved his father and brother's energy. You guys remember them? When he mentioned watching the show for the first time and seeing a man who was truly ready for marriage. Now from here, things turn to Johnny and Amy and if they've had their first fight yet. Have y'all had a fight yet? Oh, really? <laughs> I love that. Isn't that so cute? Have you guys had a fight yet? They're in love, love. They really like each other. That's what I'm saying. What do you got to fight about? What do you have to fight about? Why are you fighting with your the love of your life? But okay, okay, ask it. Oh, really? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're really cute together. Why are you fighting with the love of your life? I love that. It's but okay, okay, ask if they've had their first fight yet. However, what I really want to know is if he's had his first vasectomy yet. Or True. I want to know if they figured out, you know. Or better yet, have they had sex yet? Oh, really? <laughs> now from here, things switch to the alumni. I love her. I love Alexa. She's so funny. 
as they start asking questions and getting the cast to address stuff like Johnny's whole birth control thing, which he says came from a lack of knowledge on the subject, and if Jimmy- Which I appreciated because look, there is a huge conversation around birth control that is like so confusing to people, and people, there's so much misinformation about birth control, oh it's insane. His friend with one-time benefits was happy to have their secret let out on air. She didn't love hearing it. She was there. By the way, Micah and Jess became friends. And I think that's very interesting, but makes a lot of sense. And I kind of like that for them, honestly. For me, they felt one of them is really pissed off at me for mentioning it. It was also. You guys are talking about the cancer of the narrator, the way he sounds. Um, it, it's not my favorite sound, but lots of people like these kinds of YouTube sounds like. And then the guy said this and it's like, I don't like it. It's like, wow, if only it's like, yeah, the way he talks isn't my favorite, but this was one of the best like summaries I saw of the reunion. So I was like, let's watch this one. But yeah, it's not my favorite. People love it though. 10 top places to have sex when no one's around your mom's bedroom. <laughs> She had a, a an ex-boyfriend that she still hangs out with. She, she Oh my god. First of all, she looks so good during this reunion. And second of all, this whole thing he brings up again is so annoying. I don't. I don't hang out with him. Oh, oh, are we starting? Is there another fight brewing like the good old days? Make out. Well, naturally. Do it. Fight and make out. Actually, this then transitions into a discussion with Jimmy and Chelsea. But boy, did they let these two off the hook. I mean, Jimmy does say stuff like he should have ended the relationship after that you after fight, and he does address the following and unfollowing of Jess. I did follow her along with everybody else here at the same time, the moment I got my phone back. Um, yeah, I was eager to see her, I've already hit on that, but... But then we spend far too long on Jess being mad at Jimmy for... I'm sure Jess is a nice person, but like... Everything about Jess is high maintenance, complicated, and drama. Look at her face. This category of woman, they're the women who bully you in high school. They are. They're the women who bully you in high school, who come across like they don't, but they bully you. Jess has absolutely talked shit about women behind their back. I refuse to believe that she has it. And not, don't get me wrong, we all gossip. But Jess feels like a mean girl. She's not my favorite. I'm not going to lie. She's not my favorite. But, you know, peace and love to her. Even her face, like the way her face looks, it's literally like this kind of face on a person. They're always so mean and dramatic, but they feel very self-righteous, which is fine. We love that. For an interview he did where he made her look bad by saying she stormed out after 10 minutes on their last date or something. Of course, the show then cuts in the actual footage where it's revealed that she- Discord says, nah, they bully you in elementary, girl. ...left after 2 hours and 13 minutes. But I mean, come on, as this segment- That was interesting. Do you think that, you know, so Jimmy thought they talked for 10 minutes or what felt like 10 minutes, maybe 45. And she's like, no, we talked for over 2 hours. Do you think he was having like a like a memory lapse with time? Or do you think that um do you think that he was like just straight up lying? I can never tell with Jimmy. You know, yes, Maddox smirking type of face. She smirks. She has like a smirk. Like a, she always looks like she's smelling something bad with her nose. You know what I mean? Dragged on. I kept looking at my TV going. You said hey, I stormed out in 10 minutes. I I'd maybe give you 45 minutes. I don't care. Like, give me the hot questions for Chelsea. Give me the updates on these. Is Chelsea's mouth smaller than normal? Am I fucking crazy? Does she get a lip reduction? Is her mouth smaller? Does she get like a Botox thing? Her mouth literally looks smaller. Two, because are they together? Apparently people have been spawning. Stephanie says Jess feels like a fake girl and the fact that she was willing to get engaged to a man even before even introducing him to her daughter. Okay. That was brought up by a content creator on TikTok. I don't remember who. But I actually think it's a big red flag when women date when they have daughters and when fathers date when they have daughters or sons and they don't consider how that's going to impact the kid. Like, I mean, regardless, but specifically moms who date men when they have daughters at home. I am like, why are you so eager to bring a, bring a man around your kid that your kid's not even going to get to know? And so, yeah, like, I thought that was kind of suspicious that a single mom would be willing to marry a man after two months of not seeing him, basically, and then, like, barely knowing him. Um, I didn't like that. 
yeah, I thought that was a huge red flag. Now, some people think, like I said, she's an industry plant. Some people think she's just literally in it for money anyways and that she was never going to do it. But she also exploits her kid on social media. I think I think putting your kids on social media is a red flag in the way that she's doing it. And she and her daughter make TikToks together. So maybe it's positive. I struggle with this. I think if your kid is being a representation of like mental health or disability and the child wants a way to have a community, I think that makes sense to me. But if your child is like thriving socially outside of social media, like why are they on social media? But then I know people use social media. Like, again, I'm not trying to black and white this. I don't want to do that. But I because I don't because I see parents who bring their children on social media for disability awareness. And I think those kids really need an online community. Like, I definitely think neurodivergent kids, we do a lot better with online communities. And so I understand that as well. But something about something again I can't black and white it because I don't know the intricacies of these children but yeah I don't love I don't love it but you know it is what it is who cares it's not my kid them together but no I have to go out and google it to learn that they apparently dated for a few dates after the pods which still doesn't explain the photos of them at lunch or hanging well, wouldn't you be hanging out with people you made friends with, though? I don't think it's that weird for people on the show to hang out with each other, even if they're not doing anything. I don't think it's that weird. And also, you end, like you fuck your ex sometimes. It happens. You know, I don't know. ...out at a nightclub just the other week. And so this was another gripe of mine. Chelsea and Jimmy's relationship really got glossed over. I don't know, maybe... Yeah, for some reason, they didn't do Jesse... Jesse... They didn't talk about Chelsea and Jimmy for very long, and I thought that was weird. I was kind of surprised. I, I I did wonder why they did that. You know what I mean? Either trying to get these two back on Perfect Match or something, which Micah and Izzy are apparently going to be on, which... Very interesting. I do wonder if Izzy does cocaine, because he got so skinny after the season. And he always looks so dead in the eyes. But then, you know, I never know. Also, no judgment on cocaine. They also announced at the reunion, so... Yay. <laughs> and well, the reunion then starts to close out with a few updates. Like how season one's Giannina is having a baby with Bachelor Cute. star Blake Horseman in a moment that had me pointing to my screen going... It's a crossover! Also, Zack and Bliss are having a baby... <laughs> This autistic couple is my favorite. If they do not both have autism, I'll eat my left foot. They are so autistic. There is no way these two humans do not have autism. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not diagnosing anyone, but I would sell my left foot in exchange for betting these two people get diagnosed. There ain't no fucking way these aren't a couple of autists and they were perfect together. They are so compatible. They're so cute. I bet their baby's going to be so cute. Oh my gosh and so are Alexa and Brennan. <gasps> I love Alexa and Brennan. So cute. And I, for one, want to applaud Vanessa Lachey on her restraint all through this segment. Same. See- I agree. Season 4's Chelsea then announces she's been hired as a casting director for the show, as apparently production pulled up to her one day and said, You have been promoted. <laughs> you are now one of my elite employees. So if you hate any future <laughs> contestants, you know who to blame. And then finally... I was so frustrated by them. I loved them. And then I was so frustrated by them. I was so, conv- I was so blindsided by Kenneth. I was so invested in Kenneth and Brittany. Cause obviously Brittany's my girl. Hello. I was so blindsided by them. I was so shocked. Wait, green bean. You said, why do they have autism? I never got that from them. I literally have autism and can spot it anywhere. Neither of them had signs. What? I totally disagree. Oh my God, I totally disagree. Oh my God, everything about their speech patterns, um, their speech patterns, their like interests, their educational backgrounds, the way they operate in social situations, the way they match together their energy in general. Mikey with the super chest says, congratulate me. I got a plaque award at work. Oh my God, yay. Congratulations, that's amazing. We love a plaque for a plaque. I don't know what that means, but I said it. Thank you for the super chat. Congratulations, bitch. We do touch upon Kenneth and Brittany, where Kenneth <gasps> basically- If Kenneth isn't gay, I'll eat my left foot. I thought Kenneth, Kenneth was deaf bisexual, at least. He's got a little bit of the... Livy says, apparently there's rumors Kenneth is gay. I definitely, Ken- I definitely find Kenneth to be very... But why gay? Is it because he's Christian? Like, 
I thought he was maybe pansexual, bisexual, but then he's Christian. I wonder if that gets in the way of it. You know what I mean? Basically says he was on his phone because he's a real hands-on principal, and so it was all work. But now these two are like crazy good friends. We speak nearly every day. Yeah. Um, well, one thing you know, he's always got his phone, so you always reach him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, how could I forget one of the wilder updates from the reunion? Because after they do this segment where they show Matthew's dates with Amber and compare it to his dates with AD... Because I don't want to tell something to somebody else and then tell you something, it's like, I'm, I'm just not gonna do that. Asked you about your dad, because I really don't know if I could propose to somebody without asking permission. Because if it got to it. Yeah. And we were at the end. Yeah. I would tell him I'm not doing it unless I talk to her dad. There's really two, only two outcomes. Is that Matt's like, Matt, so Matt's like pickup line is like, yo, let me talk to your dad, bro. Let me talk to your dad, bro. Is that his pickup line? Oh, Kenneth gives me asexual vibes. I could see that too, actually. Amy says his cousin said he was gay. Yeah, but what kind of gay? Pansexual gay? Bisexual gay? Gender inclusive gay? But also, if he's gay, that's great. Represent. But also, like, I wonder if he has conflict because he comes from a Christian bubble. But also, he kind of does give me asexual vibes. Yeah, Val, I think you're onto something. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. And that's either with you or not. Oh. Well, after this, AD comes out with a bombshell update. Did you ever reconnect with Matthew in the real world after the show? Matthew and I, we went on a few dates. Well, the first... Genuinely, I did think less of AD in that moment. Not as a full consciousness, just as a woman. Not as a consciousness, just as a woman. Only because she's in her 30s. I thought she was in her 20s. When I found out she was in her 30s, I was like, oh, just as a woman, not as a consciousness. First one, he wanted to apologize to me. He ended up cooking me dinner. You went into his apartment? That's a brave choice. Mm -hmm. Eventually, though, things fizzled and, whew, I am spent. Yeah, I agree, though. Monkey says that cousin needs to mind their business. Yeah, I agree. That cousin needs to mind their business. Don't be outing people, bro. This was a major step forward in the quality of these reunions. Okay, I agree. Step equality of everything. But I did like that Nick lectured people and said, don't come on the show for clout, guys. I'm like, yeah, bitch, don't ruin my experiment. Union specials. Now, was it perfect? Not no. quite. However, they sure were listening. And that gives me hope for the next time they do this. But for now, goodbye, season six. You were a hot mess, a lot of drama. Better than the last season. The last season was almost like not even worth it. Notice how they barely mentioned it. Can you name one person from the last season? Oh, I guess Izzy. Izzy was the only Izzy. But it's not like it wasn't that interesting of a season. You know? And sometimes... You made me feel uncomfy. So oh, that's it for this recap of The Love is Blind oh, Season 6 Reunion. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like. Thank you, absolutely. Oops, I opened up the page. Here, let's like, I'll like the video. Good video. Good video. Very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. That was good. That was interesting. Okay. All in all, to summarize my theory or like theme for this season, because every season I find a theme, this theme felt like settling in a whole ass show. I felt like everyone was so desperate to settle. It felt they were so desperate just to feel chosen. It felt so desperate and sad to me. And I just didn't like the feelings of that. But I also have to wonder, how dysfunctional do you have to be to sign up for love on Love is Blind? How dysfunctional do you have to be, you know? <gasps> Ingrid says, you made me feel uncomfy. I'm so sorry, Ingrid. I'm sorry. All I remember last season is Stacy's awful blush. Bro, Stacy's blush from last season was wild, bro. Wait, did, is using uncomfy cringe? No, it's... It's the baby talk mixed in with the baby sounds mixed in with her trying to have a serious conversation with him that I think is cringy. I don't think using the word uncomfy is what's cringy because she's trying to say like, you, instead of saying you make me feel uncomfortable... She's like, you make me feel uncomfy. She's actually kind of downplaying it. But also it's the tone mixed in with the context that is like, uh, it doesn't match. 
You know what I mean? It's it's like the way she talks that's difficult for people because it's it's like I said, all of these people, <clears throat> they're like lying without meaning to lie. It's all subconscious lying to an extent. But they want to be good people. And I don't think they're evil people or bad, bad people. You know, it's just like there's an unconscious, subconscious, maybe even lying that comes out. That's why Clay talks so pretty. It's why like Jimmy goes, what? I'm happy. I love you. It's why Chelsea's like, something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. It's like why everybody's like, and then keep in mind again, the only couple that made it to the altar is also the only couple who's never had a fight and is totally happy and they're sweet as beans. Science says, do you believe it was because the cast was a bit older than previous season? You mean last season or this, like this season? Wait, last season? I don't know. Was it? Oh, I guess. Was it? I don't know. I guess I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah, I don't know. Alex said she's not being an effective communicator with her choice in language and plus tone. Agree. Yeah, she's just not effective. And the problem is, is like the way you communicate can make people shut down. And it could be and it's unintentional or not. Like, look, sometimes the way I talk or the way people talk to me, it grates my ears. And I'm like, oh, I don't like the way you're talking. I'm so sorry. Hold on. I know you don't mean it on purpose, but like the way you're talking is going to trigger me. But I don't mean medically triggered. I mean, just like upset me. Like I'm, you're going to you're going to make me feel weird. So can you hold on a second? It's like if you really love someone and you're coming in with like authentic energy, that person's going to say, OK, hold on. Let me think. And you're both going to have a moment and you're going to try to make the better the moment better. But because usually people are trying to win in the fight or win in the discourse or win in the uncomfortability, there's like a disconnect that occurs that causes people to double down, double down and subconsciously lie. So if somebody had a conversation with Chelsea and she was like, I really, I really just, and she's having this, <laughs> I'd be like, Chelsea, let's calm down. Let's take a 10 minute break. Do you want to have some tea? I feels like this is really difficult right now. Should we drink something? Should we have a moment? Nobody does that though. They escalate and they keep having the conversation because neither of them know how to say, I'm so sorry. I'm like really in my feelings. I think I just need a moment. Nobody has that skill set. There should be a moment where they say, hold on, I want to have this conversation with you, but let's let's de-escalate and then we'll have the conversation because now we're just escalating and you learn that in therapy. You learn that in, you know, understanding yourself and your limitations, but de-escalation is a skill and People don't seem to have it. Look at Sarah Ann escalating, 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 yelling, getting trashy, moving her body forward. So even she couldn't de-escalate. It was really interesting, actually, you know? So anyways, okay, with that said, if you're going to go on a show like this, shout me out, say bubbles, but also ask yourself, why am I going on this show? Do I really think I'm going to find the love of my life on this show? Now, to be fair, some people have. I think they have. But is the love of your life on this show? Like as an example, I got off the dating apps because I was like, look, the love of my life is not going to be on a dating app. I don't love dating apps. I had to force myself to be there, which tells me my person isn't going to be there. Right? My person is not going to be on a dating show. Love is blind. Like my person isn't going to be there. But if you think your person is there, that's interesting, right? Use that as an introspective opportunity. I knew my person was going to probably watch my content at some point and come across me on the internet and be like, oh, that girl has interesting ideas. Every time I made content, I was like shouting out for my person to realize like, hey, if you see me, hit me up because like this is where I spent a lot of my time. You know what I mean? And that's how it happened, right? I knew that for three years, I was like, I'm telling you, my person's going to see my content at some point, going to see me on Twitter. They're going to watch me in a debate somewhere, somehow they're going to see me and they're going to hit me up. And I know I was asked one time, I was asked by a YouTuber, do you ever feel like the, like people are watching you and using it as a way to manipulate you and to convince you to be with them? And I was like, nope, they couldn't do it. I was too healthy and too stable and too ready so the moment someone came into my life, I could get them, I could figure out they were lying to me on the first date or I could figure out they weren't compatible with me like right away, right? So I already knew. So no, it didn't matter how much you watched my content. People don't see me enough to actually be my person. It's not just a matter of regurgitating 
my content back to me, you would have to be able to see me. And the people that tried to pursue me romantically, they couldn't see me in a way where I was like, we're not symbiotic. We're not symbiotic. Nope, this isn't it. Nope, nope, nope. And no offense, like with peace and love, go find your person, right? Nope, you're not it. I'm not going to make you happy. Next. So this idea that somebody could fake it enough to convince me that they're the one by watching my content. No. Not unless you're settling. Only if you're settling, I think, can someone pretend long enough to convince you. You know? No. Chrissy says, I wish I had intuition like you, but it's even more than intuition. It's like, it's a combination of enough data that comes with enough evidence. So yes, intuition plays a role, 1000%. But also I had enough data to come to the right conclusion. And the data is specific. So yes, maybe it's like a Britney method. But when I figured out my values and I figured out what questions to ask on a first date, I was asking because I was trying to see, I was trying to see them as themselves. Like it's not just like, hey, what's your favorite color? And they have to answer the correct color. It's how they answer how, what, what they know about themselves. Like I can tell right now listening to Clay, like you can tell listening to Clay, he's bullshitting you. But AD was like, I might give that a chance anyways. But if I felt at all like I was being bullshitted, I was like, thank you for your time. I'm done. Like, you know what I mean? Fishy says it's partly experience and self-awareness. That's true too. Obviously I've dated enough bullshitters that I know. And I've bullshitted my, myself enough like AD has to take those bullshitters into my life. Remember that I've been toxic enough to be AD and to say yes to a clay. So I know a clay when I see one because I'm like, mm, no. I haven't dated the specific category that clay is, but I've dated the specific category of guys who say all the right stuff but aren't the right people. You know. You know in like the deep core of you that like, even AD knew, AD knew, she knew, she knew he had red flags and she kept going anyways. I told myself the moment, don't keep going. No matter how pretty they talk, actions speak louder than words. And also people tell you who they are. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Thank you.